Our toll free lines, also the Skype username. You can call in about anything you want. Mark Zuckerberg, the head of Facebook in the news, saying that Facebook, or rather internet service, or does he actually mean Facebook, should be considered uh, akin to free hospitals and libraries. Daryl, you've got that story. We'll talk about that here in a little bit because there's also another story about his internet.org, which is basically a restricted version of the internet that restricts you to Facebook. And like a Bing search, basically, uh, is sort of spreading around the globe as a as an internet, a free internet alternative to people. So it all ties in together. We'll we'll get into the details there. But first, let's go to your phone calls and thoughts. Actually, Skype, uh, where our username is lrn.fm. We've got Brody calling from Pittsburgh. Brody, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey guys, hey there. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, so I'm I'm calling about uh, actually kind of two subjects that are kind of commingled. So. The first really is government authority, and I think the biggest problem with uh, humanity or society, whatever you want to say, is their belief in government authority. Mm. Um, I think, uh, you know, the problem is uh, in order for governments to have actual legal authority, they need consent of the governed. And as far as I'm concerned, consent would mean our signatures on a contract, which they don't have from anyone. And Uh, I've seen... Polls done recently where like 62% of Americans say that the federal government does not have the consent of the governed. But yet the federal government still chugs along because they claim that the consent is, well, you're still within our jurisdiction. Because they're using implied consent, not express consent. Well, and uh, people keep going along to get along for the most part. While they may be saying that they don't give their consent, they still continue to obey due to the threat of violence being used against them constantly. So I don't, you know, I don't know which percentage of Americans pays income tax because they love the U.S. government versus the percentage that pays because they're afraid of going to prison. But it would be interesting to find that out. Right. But yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, they they don't have express consent. They say it's implied, but you know, un, in law. Um, an implied contract is usually something that that's for something that's very minor. Um, for something major like giving up all your rights, that would usually be considered you you would you need to have express consent. Um, but of course, they're not going to listen to any of that because they're the government and they're just going to do whatever they want to do. Yep. And people let them. People are going to let them do whatever they want to do because people don't. I think it's because people don't stand up for their rights and say, "Hey, government, you have no actual legal authority." But the, the, the thing I really want to get to is the Free State Project, I've noticed, is getting close to their 20,000. Yeah, they just crossed and from 91 to 92 percent today. It took four days. About four days, whereas the last 1 percent from 90 to 91 percent took about nine. Prior to that, it took about 30. So it really seems to be increasing in, uh, in the clip of signups right here toward the end, which I think is exciting. Sorry, go ahead with uh, your point. So my, my concerns are, first of all, from my understanding is the Free Start Project originally had a goal of getting the 20,000, I believe, within three years or four years, which would make sense to me because, you know, the first 10,000 that signed up, if they signed up within the first 10 years, I don't know how long it's been going, but who knows what their mentality is now, those first 10,000 signers, whether they're, they're still wanting to move or yeah. whether, you know, they were... Under that Who really cares, ultimately? I mean, I get where you're coming from, and I don't expect to see more than 10,000 of the original 20, of, you know, of the total 20,000 signers for the Free State Project move. I think we could probably get 5,000 of them pretty solidly. Uh, anywhere between five and 10,000, I would say, would be icing on the cake. And originally, Jason Sorens, the creator of the Free State Project, which for our newer listeners is the idea of concentrating liberty-minded people in the same geographic area so we can achieve more liberty in our lifetime, he originally, you know, basically just chose that 20,000 number, and he didn't realize that it was going to, that his movement was going to attract what he later considered to be super activists. And so he would have, if he could have, and it was too late, obviously, but, you know, a decade later, he would have revised his numbers 
to 2,000. He's uh, also said that he would have had the vote happen later. Instead right. of having the vote happen after 5,000, 5, he would have had the vote after like 10,000 because there's there was definitely sort of a drop off on the increase of signers mm-hmm. after the vote happened because a bunch of people were like, oh, I don't want to move to New Hampshire. Right. But if the vote had not happened yet and it was, all right, you know, sign up and then you can vote on which one of these 10 states. More people would have signed More faster. More people probably would That's have true. signed faster. Well, you know, it's all hindsight being 2020, right? Like no one right. had ever done anything like this before. And ultimately, even if only 5,000 people show up out of the 20,000, that's 5,000 dedicated, liberty-minded people who've been willing to pick up their lives and move for this ideal. And not that's to mention, huge. Not to mention the... 2,000 or so people that are friends of the Free State Project right. living in New Hampshire. So, yeah, add another 2,000 in there. And then don't forget that, you know, we've already created this amazing movement that has been called the single greatest threat to the state by someone who's a state representative who is a state lover. Uh, you know, we've already created the most formidable opposition to the state, and we've only had 1,000 or so, you know, 1,500 people move as early movers. So, you know, you triple those numbers, and you're going to have an incredible force to deal with that's only going to attract thousands more over time. So just because only ten or five to 10,000 of the original 20,000 free staters move, uh, that doesn't mean that we won't continue to attract new movers over time. So that's what I would say to that. Go ahead, Brody. And then really my, I mean, I, and I understand your point. I've already thought about it and I, 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 I kind of tend to agree, but my other bigger concern is the, the question of how many of these people that have signed up are, are liber- so-called small, small government libertarians versus ANCAPs, because I have a couple of uh, second cousins I've been arguing with on Facebook and I would consider them small government libertarians and they cannot get through their heads the idea that government doesn't have any actual legal authority. And if, if if these are people that want to move there just to separate from the United States, I, I, that's not my interest. I, I, I don't want to separate from the United States. I, I want to end the belief in government, the, the belief that they have authority sure. to so commit these atrocities. I would say – so. let, let me first explain the statement of intent because that's really important, and I don't think it matters if the people are small government libertarians or people that you know just say, I want to go live in the woods and have my own commune. It doesn't matter. Because the statement of intent says that you intend to move to exert the fullest practical effort to the creation of a society where the maximum role of government is protection of life, liberty, and property. And it doesn't matter if, you know, I I definitely want there to not be a government for the state of New Hampshire, but if we can get it down to where I don't even realize it exists— then that would possibly be good enough for me. Well, further, here's, uh, I think, what's an important thing to point out, and you don't really know this unless you've lived here for a little while in in New Hampshire. The joke is that the difference between a small government libertarian and a full-blown voluntarist is six months in New Hampshire. I mean, the fact is you get these people that you've been trying to persuade for, uh, you know, a decade or whatever to New Hampshire, and then they're going to be around hundreds of people who are voluntarists and anarchists and, you know, principled libertarians. I don't find very many small government people that I know of. I know they exist, but they don't, I don't run in those circles. I mean, I can fill my entire life with voluntarists if I want to here uh, in New Hampshire. They start hanging around those social groups and they become part of a voluntarist real peaceful liberty oriented community it's you know they're going to be persuaded if they're not listening to you they'll listen to you know 10 other people who are uh, you know not as well known to them but for whatever reason they'll take more seriously so people will change their position on things uh, as they spend more time around real principled libertarians okay and that's really what my concerns are so you know um, I, I'm just I guess I'm just trying to get a feel of how it is there I would recommend you come and check it out. I mean, if you can afford to do it, the Liberty Forum is coming up in February. It's the about a month and a half. Yeah, the 18th through the 21st, and that'll give you a real taste of what it's like to actually be around people. In fact, I I had a cool uh, there was a cool post on the Free State Project Facebook group that I'm going to pull up by a guy who 
really had, I think, an epiphany last night during his New Year's Eve celebrations with other free staters. And I think it'll be instructive here. Hey, thanks, Brody, for your call tonight. Appreciate it. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And you know what? Even if the small government libertarian never converts to a true, you know, full-on voluntarist, that's okay. I'd rather have small government libertarians around than status. 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. We've had an amazing year here at Supernatural Silver. We've truly enjoyed the fantastic response from thousands of people as they've tried our extraordinary product, and we're thrilled at the life-changing results people have. Our company email is continually full of happy, satisfied customers who thank us for the help they've received from Supernatural Silver. This holiday season, as you think of gifts to give your loved ones, consider giving Supernatural Silver, a gift that can help provide good health and wellness, a gift that can change lives and make a real difference in a world where we are constantly exposed to dangerous health threats. Give yourself and your loved ones a fighting chance. Give Supernatural Silver. Go to SupernaturalSilver.com and use the promo code HOLIDAY2015 for 20% off. And this holiday season, we wish you and yours the blessings of peace and good health from all of us here at SupernaturalSilver.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 90% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. If you're a regular reader of FreeKeen.com, you know there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at FreeKeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at FreeKeen.com. That's FreeKeen.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Cryptocurrency and peer-to-peer -peer tech developments happen fast. Stay in the loop with The Daily Decrypt, a new video channel and podcast that will keep you on top of the latest innovations in crypto finance, security, networking, transportation, and gadgetry like drones and 3D printers. Subscribe to The Daily Decrypt on YouTube and SoundCloud and be an early adopter of the future. The Daily Decrypt. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live, and you can join us here 
The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We also have Skype, so Skype on in to join us here at Skype username LRN. Dot FM. There's a movement in healthcare today full of people ready to stand up and take charge of their health care. People like you who are tired of paying too much for health care and getting too little. Folks who are standing up for their values and letting their conscience make decisions based on timeless principles. It's a movement sweeping the nation and you should be part of it. Liberty Health Share is leading the movement of people who are looking for an alternative to traditional health insurance. Liberty Health Share is a health care sharing organization of people who are sharing the cost of health care in an easy and efficient way. Choose your own doctor, your own hospital, and live out your values in health care. You can join the movement and change health care for good at joinlhs.com. Join lhs.com or call them toll free at 800 722 8041. That's 1 800 722 8041 for Liberty Health Share at joinlhs.com. It's Ian and Daryl in the studio here tonight. Uh, we just had a call from Brody in Pittsburgh. With some questions about the movement in New Hampshire, as the uh, you know the Free State Project is closing in on 100% of its goal, just having crossed to 92% of the total number of 20,000 signers that they're looking for, you went over the statement of intent, which has to do with being willing to work towards a government that, at its maximum role, would protect life, liberty, and property. Yes. Uh, but, of course, the minimum role could be zero. So uh, I find that a lot of the people here in New Hampshire, a lot of the activists at least— are principled libertarians who might otherwise be described as voluntarists. They may self-describe as anarchists, but I personally don't care for that term. But those are the kinds of people that I experience here. I don't know about you, Daryl. Has that been your experience within the Free State Project? Mostly, with the exception of a few of the Republicans that are basically you know, small-ish government Republicans. And who are also Free State Project early movers? Yes, so yeah, those people. Well, then do there's exist. actually a couple that aren't early movers that we know that we hang around with somewhat. Mm. Uh, You're talking but, about natives or people who've so, been here some a long natives time? or yeah. people that have been here for like 20 years. Uh, you know, they're good people, and I certainly will work with them on certain issues. Absolutely. But I want to go a little bit further towards freedom. Yeah, and uh, but the the majority of my experience is with people who really understand liberty, here. right? And there are more people. There are more people here there who believe in that than you could know. Yes. You know, you can only know so many hundreds of people, and of course, obviously, you can only know a few of them well. Right. Um, but you, you can only really kind of keep track of several hundred people, basically, in, in your life. I, I think there have been some studies have done that, like, the average person knows 700 and something people. I don't know about you know where where they get the numbers from, but you can only know so many. And already we've got over 1,500 people who've moved here as part of the Free State Project. You cannot possibly know everyone. I was at a New Year's Eve party at uh, what's a place called Area 23 last night in Concord, which is actually a Free Stater-owned and operated uh, bar. And yes. they're like a, a nano brewery as well. And uh, they have, they're having their New Year's Eve party. And I, I'm looking around the room. I don't know mm, 10% of the people in this relatively busy uh, party on New Year's Eve. There are just so many people here. You cannot know them all. And then that's good because well, you get to be choosy. Was the party limited to free staters or since they are an open to the public establishment, there were, were there just regular people there as well. There were regular people there as well, but I don't know the difference, right? Like, I can't tell the difference. I mean, I know free staters who were in there who were talking with other people who could have been free staters or maybe not were, you okay. know, weren't free staters. But my point is, I can go to a, you know, a new movers party, which is pretty much all free staters. That's a monthly party that they have in Manchester now, and it's been pretty popular. And there's 70 people there. Right. So, uh, and, you know, 20 of them are brand new movers, people who've just arrived within the last month. I mean, it's incredible, and that's just a fraction of what, what's going on here. So here's the post from a Glenn over in the Free State Project group on Facebook, which I thought would kind of speak to what it's like to be here, because Brody was on the line earlier. You know, He's wondering what it's like. Well, the only way to really know is to come find out. Right. Uh, and here's what Glenn experienced. He said, holiday parties in the Free State Project community are fantastic. I wish I could bottle up the New Year's party I went to and send it to everybody who has signed the statement of intent. <laughs> It's one thing to know you're not alone. It's another thing to see it demonstrated. Even better than the demonstration, though, is that after you see it demonstrated enough times, it starts to change you. 
Before I moved, I felt under siege, and rightly so. It's one thing to solidarily or to solitarily rather struggle against the system. It's another thing entirely to be able to conspire with others eager for liberty. Before I moved, I had to watch what I said at parties. Now I go and just hang out. I'm able to be myself. Parties are a lot better when you don't have to keep excusing yourself from the conversation when you realize you've just spent 15 minutes talking to a rabid statist who would like to see you tortured and imprisoned. Now consider the New Year's Eve party I went to this year where every moment I spent talking to anyone felt valuable. It was all good. Everybody felt like somebody. I, I knew almost every person there by name, and I'm far from a social butterfly. I went outside to have a cigar, and the thought struck me. Maybe this is what community feels like. I couldn't say that I never felt this way before I moved out, but now it's more of a regular experience. Beyond all the politics and social change, the what that we are fighting for, these are the kind of people I want to spend my life around. These are the kind of people I can trust, and even trust with my kid. And these are the kinds of people that I want to go to a party with. New Hampshire isn't perfect, but when I think of all the laughing faces at the party last night, I can't help but think, there is hope. You are not alone. Come home and see what it feels like. And to me, I thought that was a really, you know, inspiring piece by Glenn uh, Dickey is his name. It's there on the public uh, Free State Project group on Facebook. Uh, I don't know Glenn, or at least I don't recall meeting Glenn. There are a lot of people here in New Hampshire, but I don't think that his experience is uncommon. I think a lot of people have a, have a feeling of like coming home when they move to New Hampshire. They're welcomed by people who are really grateful that they took the time to come here. Like they don't know you from Adam, but they're really connected to you in a way that is hard to explain. Right. So what do you think about that, Daryl? I completely agree. And one thing that I've noticed, because I've had sort of a totally different experience on arrival, because my initial plan when I got to New Hampshire was to hang out in Keene for a couple of days and then go to Manchester and look for work because I knew it was a bigger city. So I didn't have one of these big move-in party sort of right. things. You that didn't have a truck full of stuff. Right. Everything I owned that I was able to bring with me, I put in my car. And if I couldn't fit it, okay, I put it by the dumpster and somebody took it. Right. Uh, so I didn't have a move-in party, but I've been to move-in parties for people. And it's just amazing being able to unload, what what was it, when Chris Reitman moved in? He a had huge a 26-foot trailer. trailer, or the 26-foot U-Haul truck, yeah. plus a big tow-behind trailer. And all of that was unloaded in less than an hour in the middle of winter. By approximately 30-plus adults and several kids. Yeah. And... I, I've never seen that anywhere other than New Hampshire. And here it happens all the time. All the uh, time. Yeah, toll-free number here, 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. And I'd say that's another example of what community feels yeah. like. Uh, community for liberty-minded people. It doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. 855-450-FREE. Not on this level. This is Free Talk Live. Go check out the Free State Project at freestateproject.org. More and more people are discovering the incredible benefits of alkalizing the body, and there's no better product for it than AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops. Packed with a powerful combination of the most alkaline minerals and compounds, just a few drops in water will rid your body of harmful waste and give you more vibrance and vigor than you've had in years. Now buy two bottles and get $10 off your order. Call 800-518-7615 or visit alkavision.com. Alkalize your body. Supercharge your health at alkavision.com. By now you know that wireless technology like cell phones do in fact pose dangers to the health and privacy of everyone. Blockit Pocket's wide range of products are unmatched in providing the protection you deserve. No scare tactics, just common sense. BlockitPocket.com offers quality American-made options to alleviate and eliminate these invisible dangers. Learn more at BlockitPocket.com or call 888-315-9618. BlockitPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the 
problem, officer! Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. The new fourth edition of Healing Our World, The Compassion of Libertarianism, will take your understanding of liberty to a deeper level and has over 1,300 updated references, new cartoons, and a forward by Dr. Ron Paul. With discounts for multiple book purchases, the fourth edition of Healing Our World is a great gift for the liberals, pragmatists, environmentalists, and Christians in your life who think libertarianism is cold-hearted. Get yours today at healing.freetalklive.com and use promo code FTL for a $5 discount. The three most important important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Phone records, financial and location data, Prism, Tempora, X-Keyscore, Boundless Informant. Hey, I'll Scott Horton here for offnow.org. Now here's the deal. Due to the Snowden revelations, we have a great opportunity for a short period of time to get some real rollback of the national surveillance state. Now they're already trying to tire us by introducing fake reforms in the Congress. And the courts, they betray their sworn oaths to the Constitution and Bill of Rights again and again and can in no way be trusted to stop the abuses for us. We've got to do it ourselves. How? We nullify it at the state level. It's still not easy, but the Off Now project of the 10th Amendment Center has gotten off to a great start. I mean it. There's real reason to be optimistic here. They've gotten their model legislation introduced all over the place. In state after state, I've lost count, more than a dozen. You're always wondering, yeah, but what can we do? Here's something, something important, something that can work if we do the work. Get started cutting off the NSA support in your state. Go to offnow.org. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, and you can join us here, the New Year's Day edition of the program with you in studio tonight. You've got me, Ian. And Daryl. And coming up, Mark Zuckerberg is saying that internet is akin to, or accessing the internet is akin to going to like a library, that you should have it, sort of like you have access to libraries or free hospitals. Daryl, you've got that story. We're going to get into it, but also want to invite you to freetalklive.com. Please enjoy the features You'll find on our website there, freetalklive.com allows you to actually create the content on the front page. It's a Reddit-based system, so it's free to use. You can submit show topics that you might want us to discuss on the radio. Of course, best way to get on the air is to call in toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Let's talk about Zuckerberg. What's he saying? Well, Mark Zuckerberg has written a forceful defense of the company's plan to offer limited free internet service in India, comparing free internet, like what he's offering called free basic, with he's comparing this with libraries and public hospitals. In an op-ed written for the Times of India, Zuckerberg says that although libraries don't offer every book to readers and hospitals can't cure every illness— they still provide a world of good, suggesting that just because free internet service only offers access to a limited number of sites, which in the case of free basics, third parties can apply to join, mm. but Facebook ultimately controls, there's still an essential public service. The U.S.-based social network is currently fighting to win over a skeptical public in India with critics in the country claiming that free basics, formerly known as internet.org, undermines the principles of net neutrality. Last week, the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, also called TRAI throughout the rest of this article, 
even asked Facebook's partner in India, Reliance Communications, to temporarily suspend access to Free Basics while its terms and conditions are examined in detail. The TRAI is expected to make a decision on the legality of Free Basics and other similar services sometime in January. Now, I'd like to say, net neutrality, I do not support the idea of it. And for listeners who don't know, the idea of net neutrality is that the government in the United States, at least, I don't know what India, it sounds like India is not any better, uh, but the government in the United States, the FCC specifically, has put down rules that are essentially mandating that Internet providers treat all traffic equally, meaning that uh, that uh, they can't throttle certain Internet connections. Like, uh, for instance, they couldn't give packets for YouTube uh, priority. Let's say YouTube were to pay Comcast or uh, Time Warner or something to give their connections priority to people, make sure that the bandwidth is always there for YouTube. They wouldn't be able to do that, is my understanding of net neutrality. That's Part of my understanding, and one of the sort of tricky things with net neutrality is you hear so much horrible stuff from both sides, I don't know what to believe, because I've heard some people say that if net neutrality goes away, then the internet service provider would then be able to build you, the consumer, for accessing YouTube or accessing LRN.FM. So they, they could say, we'll, we'll include YouTube in your unlimited internet, but you've got to pay extra to go to these other sites. And if you don't pay extra, then it'll wind up being throttled and it'll be like you're on dial-up for everything except for you know, the top five websites in the world. Well, that's possible, right? And there's a lot of scare stories out there about, oh, well, if we don't have net neutrality, then they're going to slow down our internet connections or et cetera, et cetera. Right. But, you know, the market doesn't generally work that way, right? Over well, time- the market works that the market, and I'm using air quotes there, the market works that way when you have governments enforcing monopolies and having monopolies in place or pseudo-monopolies because there's not a lot of competition for internet service. Well, there's not a lot, but there is some. And even with some competition, we see internet prices going down. We see internet speeds going up over time. And that's even with the limited situation where most towns don't have more than DSL and cable to choose from. But you also got to remember that there's more than just those choices. So like here in Keene, we have those two, Keene, New Hampshire, which isn't a big market by any means. You know, population 22, 23,000 or something like that. You've got uh, Time Warner Cable, you've got Fairpoint uh, DSL, but you also have, there is an independent, uh, there are these people that are dealing with fiber installs around New Hampshire. Now, it's a government sort of facilitated Federally program, subsidized. But that is another one. And then further, there's also the uh, cell phone companies that have uh, internet service. You can get 4G communications from a couple of different providers, including U.S. Cellular and Verizon here in this area. And 4G, in some cases, can be faster, at least on the upstream side, than some of the internet connections out there. In fact, I would say 4G is probably overall a faster connection in Keene than DSL connections are. So there are multiple options for people, but it would be better with with more than that, obviously. And yes, the government right, does restrict that. Your, your 4G is running through like wireless stuff. So yeah. you, you can't have a 4G cable running into your house. Nope. If you want cable internet, there's one option that you have. Right. If you want DSL, there's one option. Yeah, but those are competing in the internet marketplace. It doesn't matter that there aren't more than one cable provider. What matters is there are multiple internet providers in the marketplace. So to argue that it's a monopoly is false. Okay, it's oligopoly. Okay. It's controlled by a few. That There are not competing services for DSL. There's one DSL provider. Sure, but there There's are still There's not enough... competing services for cable internet. There is one cable I, internet I, I see provider. what you're saying, Daryl, but there are still enough to provide competition that is at least meaningful enough to drive but prices down. But it's not down. a true free market. I never said that I'm it was. Saying. I said the market. I didn't say the free market. The, even the unfree market still has the basics of competition applied to it. But because... not to the same extent. Obviously not. 
but the, you know the point remains that it's still getting better out there and so for all the the uh, scaremongers about net neutrality saying that without net neutrality then these cable companies are going to start gouging people is ridiculous now the worst case scenario would of course be the old you know theory of okay well you've got three gas stations on one corner and they all decide to collude and uh, and raise prices together in theory the providers could come together and collude but all it takes is one company to break the the uh, the cartel right. well, in order to lower prices. Well, with your gas station comparison, I've seen stuff to where one gas station will have their price like three cents lower, and then they wind up getting hit for some sort of manipulating the market thing. Somebody else has their price three cents higher, and they get charged with gouging. But if they all have the Does same, that pro- actually happen in New Hampshire? I've never heard of that I don't know if it's happened in New here. Hampshire, but it's happened in other places around the country. Yeah, well, I don't know about all the gas regulations, but I think you're uh, you're needling ne- needlessly here on this point. My point was about cartels and breaking a cartel. Right. My point is, even if you get rid of net neutrality. If there was actually real competition instead of this pseudo oligopoly competition, yeah. then the situation you're saying of prices would still get better They'd and go down people faster. would compete, then that would apply. But we've got this weird oligopoly thing. So if net neutrality goes away, I don't know if it would necessarily wind up being better, faster, but and Darryl, actually we didn't have for net service. neutrality until this year. So. That uh, it was no, the internet. No, there's been, no. since there's been an internet, there's been things that packets of information have to be treated equally. There, uh, to it's my not knowledge, there was never the any FCC. kind of federal government thing. It's not been part of the FCC's regulations. So then but it's business policy. It, it's been, I think, ICANN has been the one. ICANN, uh, I don't know if they set the, those details, but either way... The point being that uh, businesses had provided the right service for internet providing, yes, and they had competed. And I agree with you that in a true free market, we would have more competition. We'd have more options, probably more innovation. You'd probably see fiber rolling out faster. You'd probably see prices going down faster. Probably see T1 coming out. T1 is old technology, dude. Th- T1 is basically. Uh, I thought T1 was faster than fiber. No. What am I thinking of that's faster than fiber? There's something faster than fiber. Um, I mean, I'm sure there is, but uh, I don't know what offhand you call it. Okay. Um, well, whatever that there's thing always, is. There's always something faster. T1 is is decrepit old technology. You can't do more than 1.5 megabits on a T1. Oh, okay. Toll free number tonight, 855-450-free, 855-450-3733. The net, net neutrality stuff was just simply fear-mongering, in my opinion. Your thoughts? Are you suffering with hearing loss? Are you sick of people constantly complaining that your TV is too loud? Are you tired of asking people to speak up? Would you like to hear more clearly, but you don't want to wear a hearing aid that makes you look old? Then you need to try Listen Clear, a life-changing breakthrough precisely designed by top audio engineers to fit your ear almost invisibly. And you can adjust Listen Clear to find the perfect way to hear everything, wherever you are and whatever you're doing. And right now you can try Listen Clear absolutely risk-free with free shipping. We'll even give you free batteries for life. So call now, 1-800-719-9349. Listen Clear is lightweight and completely hassle-free, and it's practically invisible. Call for your 100% risk-free home trial with free shipping and free batteries for life. For free information, call now, 1-800-719-9349. That's 1-800-719-9349. 1-800-719-9349. You're fired. According to the Small Business Administration, 75% of small businesses plan to eliminate jobs or reduce workers' hours to part-time. You're You're fired. fired. According to Gallup, the unemployment rate recently jumped to nearly 9%, and the underemployment rate hit a staggering 17.9%. You're You're fired. fired. One out of three young adults and one out of two recent college graduates are underemployed. Hello, I'm Keith Abel, a pharmacist and a home business entrepreneur. In 2011, I became one of those statistics myself. Instead of looking for another job in corporate America, I joined Dr. Joel Wallet, the Dead Doctors Don't Lie guy. We're creating steady incomes for ourselves and would like to show you how to do the same. If you want to supplement your current income, replace your income, so you don't have to become one of the statistics, then give me a call toll-free at 866-257-3105. 866-257-3105. You're fired. Don't wait till you hear those words. Start creating an extra income today. 866-257-3105. Why did you move to the Shire? 
I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. As a pioneer of the e-commerce movement, Overstock.com is proud to be the first major retailer to accept Bitcoin. Overstock was the first because Patrick Byrne, Overstock's CEO and founder, firmly believes in personal freedom and cryptocurrency. Over the past 16 years, Overstock has furnished over 18 million homes with a diverse line of products to suit everyone's unique styles and preferences. Support Overstock and freedom of choice while enjoying free shipping on orders of 0.211 Bitcoin or more. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live, and you can share your thoughts on free internet. That's what they're calling uh, the Internet Basic. Free Basic. That's what free Basics. Free, free Basics. But they're using the term Internet to describe what Mark Zuckerberg is offering through his Internet.org service. Daryl, you and I both have different versions of the, sort of a similar story. Yours is about Mark's, I guess, op-ed piece on this yes. and how the India government is responding. Uh, and then there's another piece over at Bloomberg.com, Why India's Net Neutrality Activists Hate Facebook. And so it's kind of like Mark Zuckerberg, the Facebook founder, versus net neutrality activists. The net neutrality activists are saying, look, this violates the principles of net neutrality because this Facebook free basic internet is basically, we haven't really gone over this yet, but it's basically Facebook plus certain other companies who have been approved to be on. So like there's right. a Microsoft Bing, from what I understand, uh, involved in this. The story here from Bloomberg says that it allows customers to access Facebook and select services such as Messenger and Microsoft Bing without a data plan. So I guess there's another tier where you can pay for greater internet access. But this is something that anyone in India and in other underdeveloped in uh you know countries around the world can can access i guess not anyone but they're you know it's in some countries so right. far and those people have an opportunity to get on this which zuckerberg's idea from what i understand is to bring internet and i'm putting that with air quotes around right. it uh to people all around the globe because remember only about 50 percent of the globe has access to the internet there literally are billions of people in the world with no internet access whatsoever so, you know, I I feel like this isn't Internet. I guess my, my critique of, of Zuckerberg on this is that it's not Internet, and that's okay because he's spending whatever billions of dollars he needs to spend to create this infrastructure to work with the cell phone provider. You mentioned the company's name uh, or whoever it Reliance was. Reliance Communications. Yeah, the Internet provider in, uh, in India to work with them to offer more people a semblance of an internet, a semi-internet, a, a very seriously restricted internet. So I don't think you could call it the internet because the internet sort of is defined as all of these computers internetworked together all around the globe, allowing you to access any service anywhere on it, whereas his is a restricted network. Right, and he's comparing his uh, thing called Free Basics to public libraries or hospitals 
saying that libraries don't offer every book that's ever been published and hospitals can't cure every illness, but they still provide a world of good. Uh, Let me jump back down to where we were in this article. Facebook is lobbying hard, taking out full-page ads in Indian newspapers and offering toll-free numbers for supporters to call to support digital equality. In his column in the Times of India, Zuckerberg says he is not, or rather he is nonplussed by criticism of free basics, writing that surprisingly over the last year there's been a big debate about this. Instead of wanting to give people access to some basic internet services for free, critics of the program continue to spread false claims, even if that means leaving behind a billion people. He adds Mm. that it's a fact that the free basics is opening up the whole internet with half the population who use the ad-free service paying to access the full internet within 30 days. So meaning that they start for the free with the free p- uh, plan then half of them upgrade. Yes. And well, it's never good enough. I mean the the people who want everything for free, it's never good enough. So Zuckerberg spending the these, you know, however much he's spending to do this and they're still complaining about it. Now, I get where they're coming from like you know, I want people to experience the full internet too, and I think to equi- you know to say that Facebook is the internet is problematic, and that right. that is something that is happening. I don't know if you were on the show, but uh, like a several weeks ago, there was a news story about people in in these countries like India and some you know North African. I nations. wasn't on that show, but I read that article independently of even knowing that it was discussed. Where what is happening is the people in these areas. They are coming to believe that Facebook is the Internet. So when they they talk about the Internet, they're talking about Facebook because they have this free basic Internet access. Cell phone providers in some African countries are offering this as well. And it's basically just Facebook. And so many of them don't know the difference between what the Internet is, which is this sort of open platform, and Facebook, which is in no way an open platform. Well, and there are also some people that don't realize that Facebook is part of the Internet. That's right. Exactly. Because the the story that I saw, I forget what percentage of people it was that said, no, I don't have Internet. I have Facebook. But I have Facebook. So they yeah. think that Facebook is completely separate from the Internet. Yeah, there's a lot of confusion out there over this uh, this subject. And so, you know, Zuckerberg giving this away, again, he should be free to do that. The Indian government should not be able to get in there and say, ah, oh, Mr. Zuckerberg, you have to ask, you know, if you're going to give away free Internet, or, right. you know, you have to give away free Internet. Of course, he's only giving away a slice of the Internet. And again, there are other options as well. I mean, there are these there are different competing uh, sort of freebie internet providers out there. There's Google. They're doing something with uh, like balloons or something like that that are floating in the atmosphere. I forget what that is. Is that the called. Outer Net? Isn't it Google Loon or something like that? I no. don't know. Outer Net's different. Out- Outer Net's the third one. So there's Facebook's internet.org. There's like Google Loon. I forget what theirs is called. I might be wrong about that. And then there's uh, Outer Net, which is outernet.is, I believe is their website. And that's a satellite based delivery that's system. That's a one way only sort of thing. Correct. That allows people to receive information from select places on the Internet, so including Wikipedia, which if you're going to give people access to the Internet or portion of the Internet, that's a pretty good portion to give them access to because that helps spread knowledge, whereas Facebook, right. there's a lot of junk on there. Um, so outer, you know, all three of these are different with the way that they provide people service for no cost. But do there, And here's another question. Do their service areas overlap? Well, Outernet has, I think, Europe and North and Central America covered on satellite so far. And I don't know where all of Internet.org is available. I think there's some African countries where where that is available. Because if they don't overlap in their service area, they're not really competing. Some do. Some don't, I guess. I don't know how far Google has gone with their layout of what they're they're planning. But these things are all all in the works. And either way, the inner, uh, the Indian government should have no say on whether or not Facebook can offer this Facebook-only service. Right. Basically. And I, I'm not saying that they should. Right. I'm just saying that if Google isn't also providing something in India, Google's not competing with free basics. Yes, I understand what you're saying. My point about competition is they're competing at the the level of providing free internet, obviously with the idea of expanding around the globe. All of them have the mission of expanding their services to the entire globe. So all, you know, 8 billion or however many people 
in theory, could have access to their services. What at what stages they all are in that particular goal? I you know I'm not keeping intimately familiar with uh, with their progress. Was there more that you wanted to share? Yeah, uh, The Verge continues by saying that critics of free basics, however, contend that the service is not only against the principles of net neutrality, but could also stifle innovation in India while further cementing Facebook's presence in the country. India is the second most populous nation in the world and hmm. home to more Facebook users than any other country than wow. the United States. Groups like the Free Software Movement of India have even launched their own campaign against free basics, claiming that Facebook is misleading users and that the social network could introduce ads to the service in the future. Of course they could. Now, why don't these whiners just put their own money together and create a competitor? I mean, that would be the way to do it, right? Like, go ahead, put Facebook to shame. Put internet.org to shame. Okay, yeah, you can have your free va Facebook over here, but we're offering free real internet access, which would give you access to Facebook and the rest of the internet, which is actually real internet. But, of course, there's costs involved in that, right? right? And so, you know, it's a lot easier to complain about what somebody's doing. It's a lot easier to bitch about an innovator than to actually provide meaningful competition. So they're spending their time and their energy lobbying government and whining into the media when they could be doing something productive. So let, let me ask you this question. If they weren't lobbying the government and they were just offering legitimate criticism, would you still say that they should build their own internet? Well, I mean, it's one thing to criticize. It's another thing to do. I think they should build. I mean, if if what they want to see is people being given free internet access, because it's it's going to be it's going to go two ways, right? Zuckerberg's either going to be allowed to do what he's doing, which is you know give people free Facebook access, basic glor glorified Facebook, uh, and call it the internet. He's going to either be allowed to do that, or the the court or the whoever the hell it is, the regulator is going to say. Zuckerberg, you need to offer people free internet, in which case he'll just say, I can't afford that, and pull the plug. So I think it's going to be one or the other. Right, but that wasn't my question. My question was, if they were not lobbying the Indian government mm -hmm. and just offering criticism, hey, Mr. Zuckerberg, it would be nice if, yeah. would you still be criticizing the people offering you know what, what yeah, I would put your money where be... your mouth is? Absolutely. I'm, you know, critics are worth almost nothing to me. People who are doers who critique, I have a lot more respect for. So when somebody talks crap about some of the activism that we might be doing out here in New Hampshire, you know, I don't really care what they think so long as they, you know, if they're like a libertarian, but all they do is get on the Internet and critique others. That means nothing to me. Somebody who's actually done the activism and critiques, that's valuable to me because they know where they're coming from. It's free talk live. We're coming up. Currency is too important a thing to be left in the hands of government bureaucrats especially when billions of dollars can be created with the swipe of a pen. Overstock.com supports the cryptocurrency movement because it returns the power of an inflation-proof money to the people where it belongs. Did you know that you can use Bitcoin to pay for anything Overstock.com sells while enjoying free shipping on orders of 0.211 Bitcoin or more? If you support freedom in the cryptocurrency movement, you should support Overstock.com. Are your kids spending too much time online? Are they gaming instead of doing homework? Are they on Facebook instead of sleeping? Turn their internet access on or off when you want for free at webcurfew.com. 100% web-based interface means nothing to download, install, or configure. Web curfew is free and controls any device using your home network without slowing down your internet. Block all adult web content with a click of a button. Don't let the internet raise your kids. Take back control of how and when your home internet is used for free. Visit webcurfew.com. You can control your health care with Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is like-minded people coming together to share medical costs, which saves money. You don't even have to pay for procedures that violate your conscience. Because we all share the same values. Join the movement of people who share in medical costs and change the way you pay for your health care forever. Go to libertyhealthshare.org to find out more. Liberty HealthShare. Together, we're changing health care for good. libertyhealthshare.org. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. 
You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, January 1st, 2016. Silver is trading at $13.87 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,061 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $433. Antiwar.com reports as far back as early November, the international effort to get a peace process in Syria going hinged heavily on deciding who was a rebel and who was a terrorist. To this day, diplomats warn the process is stalled on the inability of nations to answer that question. The most recent UN draft on the situation continues to list defining terrorist organizations as something still to be negotiated, despite this seemingly being one of the primary focuses of several of the involved nations. Russia, in particular, has been keen for this to be resolved, both to know who the proper rebel groups are to start inviting to the talks, and to settle once and for all which rebel factions are terrorists who can be legitimately bombed. With other nations railing at every Russian airstrike, not explicitly aimed at territory of the Islamic State, this is an important distinction for them. But other nations are resisting this quick resolution, likely in part because it gives them a talking point against Russia, but also because every major nation involved in the process has a different idea of who is and is not legitimate. Saudi Arabia in particular is bankrolling several groups that are almost impossible not to be included on the final terror list. Early on in the process, everyone foresaw this as an issue and predicted a lot of horse trading on the final list. Ultimately, if this horse trading is going on behind the scenes, we haven't seen it, and rather everyone seems to be dragging their feet rather than risk losing important allies to the terror list. Indeed, Indeed, this is going on so long that some diplomats envision simply moving on with the talks without resolving who's going to be allowed to participate, a move which itself could lead to a huge mess and a lot of infighting at the talks. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs offers premium publicity campaigns designed to facilitate an organization's adoption of Bitcoin as a payment system and to fully capitalize on that decision in their fundraising efforts. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit BitcoinNotBombs.com. UPI reports Twitter reached an agreement with government accountability groups to revive a service that allows users to see politicians' deleted tweets. The service, called Pullet Whoops, is a product of the Sunlight Foundation and the Open State Foundation, two government transparency groups. It was effectively shut down in June when Twitter revoked access to their API. Twitter told Gawker in June that preserving deleted tweets violated Twitter's developer agreement. Twitter released a statement on Thursday announcing an agreement with the two groups that would allow the service to continue, saying, We look forward to continuing our work with these important organizations and using Twitter to bring more transparency to public dialogue. Pollet Whoops was launched in 2010 in more than 30 countries. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently remove the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports Europe ushered in the new year with heightened security fears on Friday as German police evacuated two train stations in Europe, citing a tip about a planned militant attack, and Belgium arrested three people over an alleged plot. Security forces in many capitals were on raised alert after a year of militant attacks, the biggest of which killed 130 people in Paris in November and was claimed by the Islamic State. Soldiers were on the streets of Paris and police forces in London, Madrid, Berlin, and Istanbul 
Bull increased their presence as Europeans turned out to celebrate the arrival of 2016. In New York City, police tightened security for the traditional New Year's Eve dropping of the Crystal Ball in Times Square, where more than 1 million people were expected to attend. Celebrations in Germany took on a somber note when police warned of a possible terror attack and evacuated two train stations in Munich. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. From the creation of the Bible in 1912 by a struggling Baltimore book salesman to the day in 1493 when Christopher Columbus and his crew looked back on their voyage and realized what they truly discovered was themselves. The Onion looks back at This Week in History. On July 21st, 1969, astronaut Neil Armstrong became the first human to set foot on the surface of the moon. The f***ing moon, for Christ's sake. This is Tranquility Base. The Eagle has landed. Jesus H. Christ, Houston. We're on the f***ing moon. Over. Roger, Tranquility. We copy that. We cannot believe you are on the f***ing moon. I'm descending the ladder. Just one more step and I'm... Holy living f I absolutely am standing on the surface of the f***ing moon. Jesus H. Christ in a chicken basket. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. This is Free Talk Live, and you can join us. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We also have Skype, so Skype on into the show at username lrn.fm. Of course, if you are on the Facebook Internet service, you may not be able to access our content. Uh, I wonder, does Facebook... I, I presume Facebook will allow... For let's say someone who's on their internet.org, which is basically glorified Facebook service, uh, if they go to the Free Talk Live page and there's like a Free Talk Live SoundCloud link there where they could listen to or in theory listen to our latest episode, for instance, would that work because it's on Facebook? I don't know. I suspect that because it would. No, the audio is not being stored on Facebook. That's true, the but audio they, is stored on SoundCloud. I get what you're saying, Daryl, but they could still approve any uh, IP connections that are linked from Facebook. Meaning that if you're on Facebook, Facebook doesn't want someone to have a bad experience, right? And if you're on Facebook and somebody posts an article or, or a link to some audio, then is Facebook allowing that link to go but not go any further? Meaning that you could click and listen to the or audio. Or might do like what happens if... Somebody has something on their page or on their profile that they have the privacy set to friends and only friends, and you're not a friend of that person, and they mm -hmm. share it in a group that you're in. It shows attachment unavailable. It could. Or they, they could might allow. wind up doing that. I don't know. I'm not Mark Zuckerberg, and I'm not I don't have what the details. what they're doing. I'm just speculating on what they could do and wondering what they actually do. Um, you know, from anyone that has actually had experience with this, if you want to comment, you're welcome to join us here at 855-450-FREE. Is Facebook allowing content that is linked to from Facebook uh, and then stopping them? So it wouldn't be hard for them to program their system to allow you to connect to whatever external site is linked to from Facebook, but then not allow you to go any further. So if I link to a news article, let's say this article that I have from Bloomberg about Facebook's internet.org service causing controversy over in India, that uh, they could then display that sort of in an iframe or whatever, and then just simply disallow any further external links, just to basically like strip it out, disallow any further clicking from there. So I'm just wondering how it actually works. What's the details on this? Either way, it's a highly restricted version of the, the internet, which I don't think could be called the internet. I think right. that this is a private corporate network. This would be like, you know, Disneyland or whatever. Or Disney it's an World. intranet. Basically, yeah. Um, this is, you know, the, essentially you go onto their property and they're allowing you to have access to the things that they want you to have access to. And this, in this case, they're giving it to you for free. I think he should be allowed to do that, but I have concerns. And I understand where the net neutrality activists are coming from saying, you know, this is going to be, uh, this is sort of poisoning the idea of the Internet. It's confusing people. 
with uh, what the internet actually is. The the statistics are out there showing that people in these undeveloped countries or lesser developed countries that are getting access like this are thinking that it's either that Facebook is the internet or that Facebook isn't on the internet, that Facebook is something completely separate from uh, the internet. So, right. so it's really kind of messing with people's heads and and I think that's a bad thing. I think that ultimately, I'm torn on this, Daryl. I mean, I feel like he's doing something that's pretty good in that it is giving people access to something they didn't have access to before. Right. And he's arguing that when somebody connects to this service, this free Facebook, glorified Facebook service, that they will upgrade, that the statistics show that half of them will, within a month's time, upgrade to a full internet experience to, to pay for actual full internet access. So I think that's a good thing, but... Well, and still kind of icky. I, I've got to ask this question, and I know that you don't know the answer to it, but is this, you know, like half of the people upgrade after 30 days? Is it because you're giving them a free 30 day trial and you cut off service otherwise? Because a 30 Netflix, day trial to what? To an upgrade or? No, like Netflix. If you've never had Netflix before, yeah. you can sign up for a 30 day free trial of Netflix. Right. And then Netflix says like 90% of the people wind up paying us. I see what you're saying. So is Mark Zuckerberg offering a 30-day free trial, and then after 30 days you have to pay or you don't get the service? Wait, when you're saying the 30-day free trial, I'm not clear. Are you referring to his his Facebook glorified or the the the, actual internet access? The glorified Facebook. That's free all the time. Are you sure? Yes. Because he's saying after 30 days, half the people upgrade. Are they upgrading because they have to in order to keep getting no, the glorified no. Facebook? Free basic is free. It's available. That's that's part of his plot is to get more people on Facebook here. So he's literally giving them free access to it. Okay. And of course, as you know, with Facebook, Facebook and other free services like Google's mail service, for instance, turn you into the product. You're the product. Right. Yes. You, you are essentially what they use to market to companies to say, hey, we're Facebook. We've got 1 point whatever 5 billion people uh, on our service. I guess the numbers were in this uh, story from Bloomberg. 1.55 billion people monthly uh, connect to Facebook, I guess, around the entire globe. And they would like that to be three, four, six, you know, whatever, how many billions they can get on there. And if they can do, if they can, you know, bring enough ad advertising money in to support giving people free access to their system, they're going to do that. Right. So, yes, they uh, they do. As my understanding, free basic is not some sort of time limited thing. OK, but uh, but, uh, but I think a, a variant on your question should be. When Zuckerberg saying that half the people upgrade to full internet after a month, how long do they stay on full internet? Do you know? Because if you count just the people who upgrade, but you don't count the ones who leave, what are the actual numbers of retention? So if half of them upgrade and then 90 days later decide, you know, the rest of this internet isn't that great, and then you know switch back to the free basic, then that's a different story. True. Anyway, you're welcome to share your thoughts here. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Critics say that by offering a limited swath of the Internet, and I would call that, I wouldn't even barely call it a swath. I mean, this is Facebook and Bing. Uh, a limited swath of the Internet at comparatively slow speeds, the company is creating a diluted version of the web. It could stifle innovation by causing disadvantages for Indian startups building rival apps or allow Facebook and its telecommunication telecommunications carrier partners to act as internet gatekeepers now i i just had a thought going back to the question of if somebody's on this free basics and they go to facebook.com slash free talk live and they see one of the youtube videos that you posted yep or a link to the soundcloud now i i know that facebook will allow you to listen to some stuff in facebook in facebook because they're pulling it in using api mm -hmm. so they might wind up allowing the people to watch the video or listen to the thing in facebook in facebook but not leave facebook to go to the uh video or the podcast yep. or the news article or whatever. You might be right about that. Headline from USA Today, Facebook's free internet service shut down in Egypt. Uh, this broke yesterday. The increasingly controversial Facebook service that provides users in the developing world with free access to select websites has been shut down in Egypt. Facebook says more than 3 million people in Egypt had signed up for the free service. Of those, 1 million gained access to the internet for the very first time, it said. 
However, quote, we're disappointed that Free Basics is no longer available in Egypt as of December 30th, 2015. They're committed, they say, to expanding Internet access into the unconnected uh, in Egypt and around the world and hope to resolve this soon. The service launched with Etisalat Egypt had been in place for two months and was not immediately clear why it was shut down. Uh, it does give access to Facebook and other web services without data charges, had run into trouble in India, and so on and so forth. So, yeah, they're running into trouble uh, all around the globe. And I guess I'm wondering how you feel about this, because I know within our listening audience, we have a lot of, you know, let's just say Internet geeks. Uh, the libertarian movement is full of people who are very, very familiar with the Internet and you know, information technology. And I'm just wondering how you feel about this, because I'm, I'm torn over it. I mean, you know, I say allow it to happen by all means. It should be his choice to spend money on a limited service right. like this. And people should be free to choose to buy or, you know, to sign up for it or not. But obviously, I do have the concerns that it is going to skew people's beliefs about the Internet, their knowledge and their understanding about the Internet, and restrict people's, uh, you know, ultimately restrict people to this limited service. But he is saying more people are signing up for full Internet because of it. So is it in the wash a overall good thing? I'd say probably is. But your thoughts are welcome here. 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. I have a love-hate relationship with Facebook. I mean, it's it's valuable in a lot of ways, but in so many ways, it is a time waster. This is Free Talk Live. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to saveitpurse.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to saveitpurse.com right now, get signed up, and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 15 to 25% off of everything at Amazon through saveitpurse.com. It's saveatpurse.com. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional installation you control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just 19.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV say goodbye to the cable guy cut costs and get more 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. 
Please download, rate us five stars, then share the link on your social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free, at apps.lrn.fm. This is your Robertson Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading on Thursday, gold is $1 lower at $1,063 per ounce. Silver is even at $13.93 per ounce. Bitcoin is trading at $423 U.S. dollars. Our offices are closed this week for year-end processes and to enjoy the holidays with family and friends. But you can still shop our online store at rrbi.co for some of the best deals you'll find on silver and gold. rrbi.co If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can join us online. And if you've got real internet access, then go shopping with us at shop.freetalklive.com because that'll take you to some links that you can use to go to shop some of the biggest places on the internet, like Amazon. Shop.freetalklive.com has Amazon links for Canada, U.S., and U.K. You click into the right one for you, and Free Talk Live will get a portion of your purchase price. Start your shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Uh, Ian and Daryl in the studio here tonight. You are welcome to join us on the lines. We'll talk about Twitter next. We've been talking about the Facebook's Internet access. Well, Twitter has changed their policies to allow for some perhaps potentially embarrassing tweets from politicians to be more pu- publicized. Uh, that have been Well, we'll get into that here. Uh, Daryl, you've got the story, but Sean is on the line first in Colorado. Uh, Sean, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, thank you all so much. I, I, I really appreciate it. Um, for the past week, every night I've had the same dream, and uh, I just I, I need some help. I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't do drugs. I am not crazy, okay? Hmm. So, um, in, in my dream, um, I saw on side of the road. Well, I, I was on the interstate. On side of the road, all the cars were on side of the road. The the trucks, everything, and there was no fuel either. There's no electricity. Or there's no fuel, you know, electricity to uh, to pump the the fuel. So anyway, in my dream, there was a lady in Colorado, and and she's waving like as in Macedonia from uh, the Book of Acts, and and the lady's waving us to come to to Colorado. So um, there's a caravan. I have people with me, and um, and we're going there. So I I have questions. Number one. Uh, our pastors, the leaders of the church, they allowed the Sabbath to be changed from Saturday to Sunday. They also allowed our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hang to on one moment. It's to... driving me crazy the, the well, connection we have here. Can you can you back away from your phone by like two inches when you're talking to us because it's a little over overdriven. I, I'm also curious what the questions about uh, the day of the Sabbath has to do with your dream. Now you're way too far away. Now I can't even hear you. Yeah, it's not working out at all. Tell you what, Sean, we're going to put you on. Oh. Say again, please. Say again, please. The Bible says that Jesus, I know that Jesus Christ is my personal Savior. The Bible says to rightly divide Scripture to try the Spirit. So I'm trying to let people know where I'm coming from. That. I can't handle this phone. Thanks for the call tonight. It was a disjointed, confusing call. Daryl, you, you're you pretty familiar with the Bible. Uh, I mean, anything. Can you glean anything from this? He had a weird dream for the last three nights. I don't know what any of that has to do with the Bible, unless he's hoping that something in the Bible could maybe interpret his dream. But that's not what the Bible is there for. Like, the, the Bible's not there as a dream interpretation book. <laughs> Yeah, uh, toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. I mean, dreams are kind of cool. You don't really ever really know what they are all about. You ever have lucid dreams, Daryl? No, the the dream where, like, you can control things? Yeah. No. Oh, man. I've only had a few in my lifetime. They're pretty cool. Um, but, you know, it's like a whole other world in that dreamland, and I wouldn't put too much stock in trying to figure out what any of it means. It's just kind of crazy land. Toll-free number, 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. Let's talk Twitter, Daryl. Twitter is now allowing a website that I had never heard of before that— Oh, I guess when we discussed this 
earlier in the year, it was me, Johnson, and Mark, okay, not maybe. me, Johnson, and you. So, th- again, this is news to me, as well as I'm sure some of our listeners. So, what's going on? Yeah, so earlier in the year, the website Pollet Whoops, which is a project of the Open State Foundation and a couple of other uh, government accountability organizations, had their API revoked by Twitter. I don't know what the API is like. A, I forget what it stands for. Yeah, but I, I forget what it stands for. It's but a it's, way for websites outside of the site in question to utilize the sort of the, the tools of that site in question. Right. So it's something that Facebook will use in conjunction with, say, SoundCloud and YouTube to where you can actually watch the YouTube video in Facebook instead right. of having to go to YouTube to watch the video. Well, apparently back in, I've seen both June and August, but it was sometime over the summer when Twitter said, hey, uh, what you're doing here is a violation of our terms of service for developers Hmm. to where what Pilot Whoops was doing, they had some kind of program set up to where they were pulling tweets from politicians. And then if they're computer noticed that one of the tweets was deleted they then published said tweet so (laughs) they they were only publishing deleted tweets and it didn't have to be an embarrassing tweet it could be a tweet that a politician says having a ham sandwich and then deletes it because it's turkey and then repost having a turkey sandwich right so they, they were just whatever the deleted tweet was they were posting And Twitter said that violates the API agreement. Well, they came to an agreement yesterday. And I've got the uh, report here from the Open State Foundation where they say today, and of course this was written yesterday, Twitter has agreed to restore Pilot Whoop's access to its API. An agreement has been reached with Twitter that allows Open State Foundation to publish deleted tweets by politicians again via its tool Pilot Whoop's. The agreement that will bring back Pilot Whoops online follows several meetings between Twitter and digital transparency organizations, the Open State Foundation, the Sunlight Foundation, and digital rights organization Access Now. Uh, the Open State Foundation says in August, Twitter blocked Pilot Whoops, run by the Open State Foundation, in more than 30 countries that enabled the public to see what legislators and other elected officials once had tweeted but then decided to delete. Now an agreement signed by Twitter and the Open State Foundation looks to bring back Pilot Whoops. I think that's great news. And their website appears to be Pilot Whoops, W-O-O-P-S dot sunlightfoundation.com. Is that correct? Uh, That sounds right. And it doesn't look like they brought it back quite yet. The right. Last... They've said that it might take several days to several weeks okay. to actually get back up online. Got it. I think this is exciting news. I'd never heard of this website before. You just mentioned it to me a few moments off the air a few months ago. And uh, what a brilliant concept because how many times have politicians posted something that they regretted that uh, right. later deleted hoping no one had seen? Well, these guys are snatching those uh, those tweets up. I and, think that's and awesome. There's a brief statement by Twitter. And when I say brief statement, I mean a very brief statement. Okay. Uh, Twitter actually has a blog, which is something that most people probably did not realize. Do they blog in more than 140 characters? Yeah, it, it's a full... An actual blog. An okay. actual blog. Thing. So it's blog.twitter.com, mm-hmm. and the post that they put up yesterday on this begins, Today, we are pleased to announce that we have come to an agreement with the Sunlight Foundation and the Open State Foundation around Pilot Whoops. They then have quotes from the director of uh, the Sunlight Foundation, the Open State Foundation, and someone from Access Now, and then Twitter concludes, We look forward to continuing our work with these important organizations and using Twitter to bring more transparency to public dialogue. Hooray! Twitter made the right choice. The toll-free, too bad it took him a year, or uh, half a year. 855-450-FREE is our toll-free number here tonight. Looks like there may have been a Supreme Court judicial coup in Venezuela. It's not good news. We'll share that with you, and you can also take control of the airwaves, bring up whatever's on your mind here on Free Talk Live. 
So you've got to take a state construction license exam or certification. Can't decide on what books or what chapters to study? Discover right now how you can eliminate unnecessary books and wasted study time. At ContractorExam.com, our study materials zero in on state-required test topics in an effective, multiple-choice format. So whether you're a plumber, electrician, general contractor, or other construction-related trade, ContractorExam.com will help get you prepared. Visit us at www.ContractorExam.com today. Removing bad taste and odor from your drinking water is easy. Removing the bad stuff you don't taste is what ProPure does best. Water the way nature meant it to be. Clean, crisp, and refreshing. See the complete line of ProPure countertop, inline gravity, and household water filtration products. Visit your authorized ProPure dealer or ProPureUSA.com. That's P-R-O-P-U-R-U-S-A.com. Or call 800-544-3533. Because we are smothering in spam, please do not reply to all when you can instead reply. I was recently among over a hundred invited to a corporate reunion. It's always a warm affair, and that's the problem. Enthusiasm for our upcoming get-together caused many recipients to RSVP the organizer with a cheery reply to all. I can't wait. Then others piled on with a reply to all to that. Then the, I'm out of my office now, auto responders joined in. So I replied to all, asking that we all reply only to the organizer. Hey, at least I tried. One invitee, apparently retired, shot back, point taken, but I really like seeing the responses since they're so positive. Smiley face. This better be an open bar. From survivalspeech.com, I'm Holland Cook. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live. It would be better if we talked about the basis of all of this as far as the legal theory. I get the legal theory. That's the problem with people who call like this, Scott. You really sound like you know what you're talking about, but ultimately you don't have anything to prove that you know what you're talking about. And everyone who's ever tried this stuff has gone down in flames. And of course, everyone always says after that, like you're saying about your own self and your own experience, oh, well, I didn't know enough at that time. I know now. And I really don't want to hear any more about this until you actually come up with some evidence because I'm telling you it's bunk and it doesn't work at all because these people don't follow their own rules even if you have figured out from inside their own rules even if you spent years as you say you have researching their ordinances and researching their statutes and how law works and the contract stuff and all that none of it matters because they don't follow their own rules free talk live seven nights a week from 7 to 10 eastern live on the liberty radio network at lrn.fm You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm Coming up on Free Talk Live... Copblock.org reporting on a disturbing new trend beginning with some police departments in the United States, and that is forced blood draw checkpoints. Yeah, that's right. We talked about these years ago on Free Talk Live when they were experimenting with them in Utah with the Utah State Highway Patrol, and that was several years back. 
Now, apparently, they're on the uh, the deck again here. Looks like some departments are getting ready to force you to give your blood. They've been doing this in Texas for years. Is that right? Where they, they don't force you to give blood per se if you refuse to blow into the breathalyzer. Mm. They have a judge on speed dial who then signs a, a warrant, warrant to get your blood to get your blood wow, that's crazy we'll uh, give you the latest on that story here uh 855 450 freeze our number 855-450-3733 i had in my show prep a few days back something we didn't get to you know we generally don't get to most of the show prep that we have here on free talk live because we'd rather talk to you uh but anyway uh, it was about venezuela which i've just been following for years here on free talk live venezuela and uh, north korea two of the more fascinating uh, socialist failures out there. Following the Venezuelan situation with President Nicolas Maduro, the guy who took over after Hugo Chavez, and you know how things have been just spiraling down over time, not just during Maduro, but during Chavez uh, as, as well. It's just been fascinating to watch. Recently, there was an election in the earlier part of December where the folks in Venezuela, actually, it looked like they rejected the socialist party. It looked they had rejected Maduro's group and elected the opposition party. Now, whether the opposition party is that much better, I don't know. I'm not sure as to you know what the, the key differences are between them. Maybe if you live in Venezuela and you can give us a rundown, you're certainly welcome to join us, especially if you want to call on Skype. That makes it free to call us here. If you call Skype, uh, our username is lrn.fm. But it's opposition to Maduro, and better to have some opposition than none whatsoever. And we've known that in the past, Maduro has uh, taken opposition leaders and locked them in prison cells. So, you know, it's a fairly risky thing to go up against this guy. And in this case, the election results did give the opposition to Maduro and his party the um, two-thirds majority that they needed in order to basically have some con- have control of the Venezuelan government. Well, here's the latest from the telegraph.co.uk, or rather telegraph.co.uk's Hannah uh, Hannah Strange writing, Venezuela's Supreme Court has blocked the parliamentary supermajority won by the opposition in December's landmark elections in a move denounced by opposition leaders as a judicial coup by President Nicolas Maduro. You didn't think he was going to let his power go without a fight, did you? The court, which critics complain is stacked with pro-government judges, granted a request from Mr. Maduro. Hold on, hold on. People are complaining that the government court has pro-government judges. Yeah, well, that tends to be the case with government courts, right? Yes. Uh, In this case, they're pro-Maduro judges, and they granted a request from Mr. Maduro to suspend three opposition parliamentarians who were due to take office on Tuesday. It will now consider a legal challenge filed by the socialist government, which has alleged a, quote, criminal, unquote, vote-buying plot and other electoral fraud on the part of the opposition. One socialist parliamentarian has also been suspended. But the opposition insisted the elected parliamentarians would turn up to be sworn in on Tuesday anyway, setting the stage for a tense political standoff and a possible repeat of the civil unrest which paralyzed parts of the country throughout much of 2014. The opposition coalition, known as the Democratic Unity Roundtable, took 112 out of 167 National Assembly seats in the December 6th election, landing the first major blow against the socialist government since the late self-styled revolutionary Hugo Chavez took power in 1999. Of course, as you know, if you've been paying attention to a little bit of news out of Venezuela, Chavez, of course, made his mark by nationalizing uh, several industries in Venezuela and, of course, His uh, successor, Mr. uh, Maduro, has continued in that policy of nationalization of the state taking control of businesses like supermarkets. Well, there's good news for Venezuela. There are no more bread lines. But now that's only because there's no more bread. Well, now there's lines for all kinds of basic food products. I mean, things haven't gone to the point where it's bread and water yet, but it's getting close. There, 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 there's still lines for food, but there's not bread lines because I, I don't think they even have bread. I don't think they have food in Venezuela. They do, thanks to the black market, uh, but not right, no but thanks not to at the, the grocery government. store. Like, right. you know, we, we've always heard the stories about in Russia, there were the bread lines to where people would stand in line to get the bread made by the government. They don't even have that in Venezuela. 
Oh, wait a minute, Daryl. There's no lines in Venezuela. What are you talking about? There's no pictures of any lines outside of stores. Right, because they passed a law saying you can't take pictures of the lines anymore. Yeah, it, uh, if the military members who are patrolling the streets outside of the stores and supposedly providing order see you taking a picture, you're going to be put under arrest. And I think you're also prohibited from taking pictures inside the stores as well. Wouldn't surprise me. I haven't heard that, but it probably it's probably part of the policy there and of course a lot of the shelves are completely barren in venezuela so that but you can still get socialist barbie probably no those sold out real fast because remember (laughs) they sold them at one tenth the retail price and almost bankrupted the toy retailers in the country as a result of that that was back when maduro i think it was in 2014's christmas season mandated that stores sell the barbie which wasn't actually called socialist barbie it was just regular barbie being sold at one tenth of the retail price which means that The rest of the uh, nine-tenths had to come from somewhere else. Uh, So the results gave them a two-thirds supermajority by just one seat, which would have enabled them to unpick the grip on power of Chavez's successor, the unpopular Mr. Maduro. If they lose the three deputies, however, those powers will be diminished. They will still be able to remove cabinet ministers as well as other possible moves. But crucially, they will not be able to call a referendum, such as their much-hoped-for recall vote on Mr. Maduro's presidency or change the Constitution. The opposition had already been enraged by government moves to curtail its new power. Mr. Maduro had announced a, quote, people's parliament, unquote, to run alongside the assembly. And last week used an extraordinary legislative session to appoint 13 new judges and 23 substitute judges to the 32-member Supreme Court. Ahead of the court's decision, the opposition called on the international community to stop what it calls a, quote, procedural coup attempt against the Venezuelan people's decision, unquote. Uh, Jesus Torrealba, the executive secretary for the opposition party, said the ruling party's irresponsible behavior is pushing the entire country to the brink of disaster. I'd say it's already at the disaster uh, phase, which would have grave consequences for the entire region, he wrote in an open letter to the United Nations and other international representatives. So it looks like the fix may be in in Venezuela, where Nicolas Maduro has managed to maneuver enough judges into the Supreme Court to be able to give him preferential sway in an election challenge that could ultimately unseat three of the opposition party's members, which would not give them control over the country's government, or at least wouldn't give them near total control over the country's government. So Maduro would then be safe in his office and not be subject to a possible recall vote. Barely dodged that bullet, huh? Yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous. And like like you said, you know, whoever would have thunk that he would do everything he could to keep his power... I mean, any, anyone should should know this, right? Like, you know, people in power do not want to lose that uh, that power. Right. This guy's going to do whatever it takes. Uh, and this is, you know, probably his first option. Who knows what else he would consider if the Supreme Court didn't go along with him. And Maybe a military coup. You know, th- this is one of the sort of fear monger things that I've heard over the past, I don't know, a couple decades about, you know, all... Oh, President Clinton, he's not going to leave off it. He's going to find a way to get a third term. And then George Bush is going to find a way. Yeah. <laughs> so it's something that they always fear monger about in the U.S., but it's actually happening in Venezuela. Yeah. And, uh, and it is interesting. You're right. People have said that in the United States. But ultimately, that would kind of ruin the scam, wouldn't it? Like if, if Obama or Clinton or Bush hung on for a third term somehow— that would, that would kind of alert some people that something is dreadfully wrong. Right. And it's important for the people in, in power to continue the illusion that people have a choice every four years. When, of course, we know the choice is between scumbag one and scumbag number two. It's Free Talk Live. This is a life-changing message for anyone with sleep apnea who is on the go and tired of dragging around a big, bulky home CPAP device. MiniCPAP.com now offers a portable device that's as small as a soda can and weighs less than a pound. For even more freedom, you can add a battery that's as tiny as a deck of cards. It's called the Transcend Mini CPAP. And right now, you can try it risk-free for 21 days by calling 1-800-939-8536. 
Transcend is the world's first portable mini CPAP device. It gives you the freedom to sleep in total comfort anywhere you are. Our smallest and most advanced portable design ever, Transcend is so small and so light you can fit it in your briefcase or purse to use anywhere you go. It's FAA compliant too, so you can even sleep comfortably while flying. Enjoy the freedom to sleep comfortably anywhere. Call minicpap.com now for your 21-day in-home trial. 1-800-939-8536. That's 1-800-939-8536. Are you tired of commuting to a job that makes someone else rich? Working harder than ever, but getting nowhere? Do you hate spending hundreds of dollars every week on daycare? Having someone else raise your children? With our opportunities, you can start earning money as soon as next week. You get to be the boss, work from home, and live a happier life. At Be The Boss Network, you'll find hundreds of work-from-home opportunities that you can literally start today and be earning money as soon as next week. Go to freedom106.com and start earning money as soon as next week. You get to be the boss. Get out of the rat race. Work from home. Go to freedom106.com right now and change your life today. That's freedom, the number 106.com. Go to freedom106.com and start earning money as soon as next week. You be the boss. Go to freedom106.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Yeah. It's Free Talk Live, and you may join us here. The toll-free number for you to take control of the airwaves, 855-450-FREE. It doesn't have to be about Venezuela or uh, the uh, net neutrality discussion we were having earlier tonight. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You can bring up anything with you in studio. You've got Ian. And Daryl. And coming up, the Liberty Forum is just around the corner, February 18th through the 21st. It's happening at the Manchester, New Hampshire, Radisson Hotel. And Edward Snowden has been announced as the keynote speaker or one of the keynote speakers. I believe they're going to be announcing one or two more, uh, just generally based on how these things have gone in the past. So stay tuned for more announcements. But in my opinion, Edward Snowden, that's reason enough to attend. Beyond the fact that there are hundreds of liberty-minded people who are going to be in attendance, a couple hundred of them likely from here in New Hampshire, like you and I, Daryl, we're going to be broadcasting this show live every single night from the Liberty Forum. 
and also hundreds more people who are considering a move to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project or have already signed up and joined the Free State Project but haven't yet made the move as uh, as part of early movers here to New Hampshire. And hopefully by the time the Liberty Forum happens, the Free State Project will have completed 100% of its 20,000 signer goal. 20,000 people signed up to make the move as part of the idea of the Free State Project, which is to concentrate liberty activists in one place. And we'll be concentrating them in one hotel. Many of them, not all of them will attend, but lots of them will, because the, ho- the hotel couldn't hold them all. If all 1,500 early movers showed up, there'd be no room for anybody else. So come on up, join the fun at the Liberty Forum, nhlibertyforum.com. Again, February 18th through the 21st. We're going to be there. We'll broadcast live. We'll look forward to seeing you. It's an awesome event, and you don't want to miss it. It'll give you a great feel for what it's like to actually be around people who care about freedom. Now, we've been discussing uh, people who don't care about freedom, and that is the Socialist Party in Venezuela, uh, specifically President Nicolas Maduro and the uh, political machinations that he's going through here to try to avoid losing his grip on power in the country after the December 6th elections resulted in the opposition party taking not a surprising control of the country. People in Venezuela are sick and tired of the socialist government there basically destroying uh, whatever kind of semblance of a nice life they had had previously with access to, you know, food. Apparently that's a tough thing to come by in at least the traditional channels in Venezuela with stores being completely sold out of the most basic staple items like chicken and soap, uh, you know, rice. I mean, it's hard to get this stuff in Venezuela. And so when people are starving, you're going to see the seeds of political change planted. And that's ultimately what has uh, has happened here. We're going to get into a little bit more on this because the story about the judicial coup that has just happened uh, or is happening now in Venezuela, where the judges in the Supreme Court are looking to overturn uh, some of the wins of the opposition group in the elections, just, just enough, just enough overturning to remove their uh, basically, basically total uh, control over the National Assembly. But they talked about this creation of something new, a what is called a people's parliament. What does that actually mean? What is the national communal parliament that the socialist government there has now created in a hurry as their power is waning? We'll look into that here. But first, we'll go to your calls and thoughts. Stephen, listening in Washington, you're on with Ian and Daryl on Free Talk Live. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. Hey, Stephen. Go ahead. Uh, yes, I'm calling. Uh, I had heard your uh, the other night guys talking about Donald Trump with a few people, uh, and you had one gentleman who was a voluntarist who had said he is now a Trump supporter, and I have to say I was a libertarian for a long time, um, believed in the free you know freedom of, of people, uh, personal freedom. But as the world's turning and I see it going, I have now pretty much become a full statist now to this point. Are you for real? Uh, I like, yes, I I feel like nothing is happening. Our freedoms are going away. Um, and at this point, I, it's almost survival for us here in the U.S., and uh, I think it's almost just time to join the winning team uh, before <laughs> all the, I think, crackdowns are going to start happening across the country. And, I don't uh, believe this. Don't you're you're trolling, right? I mean, come on. It's so hard no, to believe. Th- this guy that called in last night, he was explaining all these reasons that he was supporting Trump. Oh, so we're not talking about Chris Cantwell? We're talking about someone else? No, th- there was somebody else that called in last night, said he was formerly a voluntarist, now considers himself an anarcho-capitalist, but he's supporting Trump. And then I asked him the question, if Donald Trump were not leading in the polls, would you support him? And he said no. So it's picking the so winner. Basically, this guy's looking at politics as a horse race, and I want to bet on the horse that's going to win. Is that how you're viewing yeah. this? You want to bet on the horse that's going to win? Yeah, it's honestly, in a sense, at this point, you know, I, I wrote in for libertarians a lot. Uh, in college, I was a part of the Green Party for like a year, but I threw that out the window. Uh, but, you know, as a gospel, I just feel this is, you know, it's just a joke. Nothing's changing. You know, if you look through history, people 
have gone through these movements for such a long time, but nothing really changes. So and because the Trump, libertarians, uh, let me see if I'm clear on this. So because libertarians have had a tough time winning political election, you've decided screw principle, screw the idea of not uh, aggressing against my neighbors through the state. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and embrace statism and support violence against my peaceful neighbor. Come on, man. You're not for real, are you? Uh, no, I, I wouldn't really say that I'm a statist. Maybe that okay, was a little strong. Uh, but I would say that I think uh, Trump has some good ideals. And even as each other gentleman the other night pointed out, you know, regarding the free market, uh, trying at least to have some market sense um, going into it. But, you know, there, I don't know. It's Maybe I just feel depla- deflated at this point, but... You, you just want to vote. A Jed, that could help. You just want to vote for the candidate that's going to win, and you don't care about anything else, right? Because you you want to be on that winning team, even though that means you're probably going to wind up being surveilled and taxed harder and stolen from even more. Right, because Trump doesn't want to make the military any smaller, even if he talks about uh, you know free markets, which I've never heard him say anything about a free market. I did hear him say something about he likes how libertarians like smaller government, but then he used, followed that up by saying, but I support a big military, and then further, you know, he supports an Build immigration crackdown. And, and send back he just uh, people from Syria and close down mosques. And surveil Muslims in the United States. Sick. He's a sick man, and uh, the ideas that he's promoting are sick. But I'll give him at least the credit of at least he seems willing to say what he wants to say, unlike some politicians who I believe probably agree with what he's saying but won't say what he's saying. But that's really the only credit that I can give to, uh, yeah. to Donald Trump. And and it's sad, you know, when, when you hear somebody who claims to be a libertarian, and a libertarian is somebody who believes that uh, non-aggression is a good thing, meaning that you right. don't uh, use aggressive force to achieve your political or social goals. If you have a goal you want to achieve, as a libertarian, you have to persuade people to sign on. You want to help the poor? Persuade them to donate. Persuade them to give volunteer time to assist. You want to help people get medical care? Put together some sort of medical sharing program or whatever. You know, Take the uh, initiative to create what you want without using the violence of the state. I'm wondering how many of these people that claim to be libertarians or voluntarist or any flavor of anarchist that then say, and I'm supporting Trump. I have to wonder how many of them would be supporting Donald Trump if Stefan Molyneux was not advocating for Donald Trump. Ooh, what are you suggesting? Is there a cult of Stefan Molyneux followers? There's people that will do absolutely anything Stefan Molyneux suggests and then say, I'm not doing this because Stefan said, I'm doing it because, and then they'll come up with all these reasons. That Stefan Molyneux said. That pretty much are things that Stefan Molyneux said. Uh, for those that don't know, Stefan Molyneux is a internet philosopher who for a long time has been was pretty libertarian for a long time and then jumped the shark basically over the last couple of years uh, and violated his own libertarian purported principles. One of the more noteworthy examples was where he went after a couple of YouTube channels that were criticizing him. And this was after having said as you know part of his broadcast, or his YouTube channel, that he doesn't believe in intellectual property, which is a kind of a libertarian position. Libertarians disagree on this issue, but he did, he claimed to not believe in it. Then he used intellectual property law in the form of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act in the United States to target two channels on YouTube that uh, were critical of him, that used his own videos and then inserted critique into those videos as well. So, you know, play a clip, then critique what he said, that kind of thing. Uh, and and he went after them, and he got them successfully shut down. So yes. that was one example. And now, as you're saying, he's jumped the shark even further by going and supporting someone like Trump, ostensibly. I've not heard the the statements myself, so I'm I'm taking your word on that. Uh, but you know, that's not a libertarian thing to do. That shows that. Uh, you know, I just don't understand it, Daryl. It happens from time to time where people will come to the ideas of liberty. I mean, Stefan Molyneux understands the ideas of liberty. He was one of the better communicators for many years. So it's, you can't argue that he didn't understand it. He did understand it. And now he's gone away from them, apparently, by supporting uh, Donald Trump. Toll free numbers 855-450-FREE, not to mention copyright. 855-450-3733. Hour 3 coming up. Join us on Free Talk Live. As a pioneer of the e-commerce movement, Overstock.com is proud to be the first major retailer to accept Bitcoin. 
Overstock was the first because Patrick Byrne, Overstock's CEO and founder, firmly believes in personal freedom and cryptocurrency. Over the past 16 years, Overstock has furnished over 18 million homes with a diverse line of products to suit everyone's unique styles and preferences. Support Overstock and freedom of choice while enjoying free shipping on orders of 0.211 Bitcoin or more. Are your kids spending too much time online? Are they gaming instead of doing homework? Are they on Facebook instead of sleeping? Turn their internet access on or off when you want for free at webcurfew.com. 100% web-based interface means nothing to download, install, or configure. Web Curfew is free and controls any device using your home network without slowing down your internet. Block all adult web content with a click of a button. Don't let the internet raise your kids. Take back control of how and when your home internet is used for free. Visit webcurfew.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, January 1st, 2016. Silver is trading at $13.87 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,061 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $433. Antiwar.com reports as far back as early November, the international effort to get a peace process in Syria going hinged heavily on deciding who was a rebel and who was a terrorist. To this day, diplomats warn the process is stalled on the inability of nations to answer that question. The most recent UN draft on the situation continues to list defining terrorist organizations as something still to be negotiated, despite this seemingly being one of the primary focuses of several of the involved nations. Russia in particular has been keen for this to be resolved, both to know who the proper rebel groups are to start inviting to the talks, and to settle once and for all which rebel factions are terrorist who can be legitimately bombed. With other nations railing at every Russian airstrike, not explicitly aimed at territory of the Islamic State, this is an important distinction for them. But other nations are resisting this quick resolution, likely in part because it gives them a talking point against Russia, but also because every major nation involved in the process has a different idea of who is and is not legitimate. Saudi Arabia in particular is bankrolling several groups that are almost impossible not to be in included on the final terror list. Early on in the process, everyone foresaw this as an issue and predicted a lot of horse trading on the final list. Ultimately, if this horse trading is going on behind the scenes, we haven't seen it, and rather everyone seems to be dragging their feet rather than risk losing important allies to the terror list. Indeed, this is going on so long that some diplomats envision simply moving on with the talks without resolving who's going to be allowed to participate, a move which itself could lead to a huge mess and a lot of infighting at the talks. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs offers premium publicity campaigns designed to facilitate an organization's adoption of Bitcoin as a payment system and to fully capitalize on that decision in their fundraising efforts. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com.
UPI reports Twitter reached an agreement with government accountability groups to revive a service that allows users to see politicians' deleted tweets. The service, called Pullet Whoops, is a product of the Sunlight Foundation and the Open State Foundation, two government transparency groups. It was effectively shut down in June when Twitter revoked access to their API. Twitter told Gawker in June that preserving deleted tweets violated Twitter's developer agreement. Twitter released a statement on Thursday announcing an agreement with the two groups that would allow the service to continue, saying, We look forward to continuing our work with these important organizations and using Twitter to bring more transparency to public dialogue. Pilot Whoops was launched in 2010 in more than 30 countries. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports Europe ushered in the new year with heightened security fears on Friday as German police evacuated two train stations in Europe, citing a tip about a planned militant attack, and Belgium arrested three people over an alleged plot. Security forces in many capitals were on raised alert after a year of militant attacks, the biggest of which killed 130 people in Paris in November and was claimed by the Islamic State. Soldiers were on the streets of Paris and police forces in London, Madrid, Berlin, and Istanbul increased their presence as Europeans turned out to celebrate the arrival of 2016. In New York City, police tightened security for the traditional New Year's Eve dropping of the crystal ball in Times Square, where more than one million people were expected to attend. Celebrations in Germany took on a somber note when police warned of a possible terror attack and evacuated two train stations in Munich. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Already struggling to get by on the basic necessities of day-to-day -day life, lunatics across the nation confirmed today that they are now barely able to afford the quickly rising price of car meat. I've got 14 Barbara Streisands to feed and three more on the way. Day and night they shout, we're hungry, Admiral. We want grade A on the loaf. We want Nissan truck. I just want to know what Bruno Mars plans to do about this. He sits around all day eating Audi ribeye and limousine bouillabaisse while we scrape by with taxi shanks. Meanwhile, the men at arms are still overseas fighting the war on Wheel of Fortune. For more on this story, check this week's Onion Review. This is the Onion News Network. It's Free Talk Live, and you can join us on the radio waves. The toll-free number is 855-453. Yeah. Joining you in the studio tonight, you've got Ian and Daryl. 855-450-3733, or Skype into the show. It's Skype username, lrn.fm. Things are getting more complicated in Venezuela after the uh, elections to national parliament revealed a huge swing in opinion. People in Venezuela voting in the opposition party uh, to take over the national parliament with more than two-thirds uh, the number of people that they would need to have basically total control of the government and possibly put President Nicolas Maduro up for a recall on his seat in the government there. But Nicolas Maduro has pulled the ace out of his sleeve, at least that's the way it's looking, and has basically manipulated the Supreme Court by, uh, you know, promoting people to it right before having the Supreme Court rule on whether or not the elections were legitimate. And now they have challenged three of the people who were elected from the opposition party, which all, if all three are rejected, and right now they, they're, uh, their commencement or whatever, what is it? The, what is it? When inauguration. They, they, thank you. The inauguration has been put on hold. Uh, they are not supposed to be there on Tuesday. They're saying they're going to show up anyway uh, to the inauguration, so things could get even more interesting come next week. 
uh, with perhaps some of these folks being arrested. And uh, things are going to get more complicated here, I think, as uh, as time goes on. But it's, it's interesting to watch this. And it's always interesting to watch the people in positions of power and how they will scrape and fight and claw to try their best to retain as much of that power as they possibly can, jumping through whatever hoops and uh, creating whatever political machinations they can to make it happen. And one of the other things they did was uh, apparently in the middle of December, so the elections where the Socialist Party lost was in the early part of December, the first week. Then in the middle of December, Venezuela's uh, National Assembly president created a new national communal parliament. This past Tuesday, this was written in mid-December, in one of the outgoing National Assembly's last legislative sessions of 2015, the legislator for the head legislator, rather, this is like the the boss of the assembly, for the PSUV, which is the United Socialist Party of Venezuela, stated that the new parliament would act to make the people chief decision makers in government. Now, when the government says they're creating the National Assembly, the People's Assembly, the National Communal Parliament, as it's being called, and that they're going to put the people in charge, what do you think the odds are that the people in that assembly are going to be the actual people as opposed to the politically connected people? They'll be people, uh, but yes, they'll be politically connected people. It is now but up the, those are still people. It is now up to you in the National Communal Parliament to discuss and present proposals that you consider necessary to help President Nicolas Maduro, said the man Diosadado Caballero, to, uh, said this to commune activists in the National Assembly. Now, read that statement again. Now it's... Hmm? But because there, there's something that I find to be very important that is missing from that statement. So read it one more time, please. Now it's up to you in the National Communal Parliament to discuss and present proposals that you consider necessary to help President Nicolas Maduro. To help President Maduro. Not what you think is best for the people of Venezuela. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not what you think is best for the country. Right. What you think is best for the government of Venezuela. No, no, no. You are to do what you think is best for Nicolas Maduro. And does, the Socialist Party. Does, does, well, it yeah. doesn't say the Socialist Party. That's basically what this is, though. That's right? basically what it is. Yeah. But does that remind you of any of the presidents in the history of the United States of America? Probably like all of them, especially in wartime. Lincoln. I, I'm thinking specifically Lincoln. To where Lincoln construed anything that was in opposition to Abraham Lincoln to be a treasonous act. And uh, for Maduro to be likened to Lincoln uh, is not a compliment. Uh, Abraham Lincoln was a bad man who used the violence of the state to force states to stay within the Union. He didn't care about slavery. If he Quote from Abraham yeah. Lincoln. If I can save the Union by freeing some of the slaves, I will do that. Mm -hmm. If I can save the Union by freeing all of the slaves, I will do that. If I can save the Union by freeing none of the slaves, I will, I will do, do that, that, that too. Yeah, that was what his goal ultimately was. Details on the role, authority, and composition of said National Communal Parliament are thin on the ground. So we don't really know exactly how people will be selected uh, for this or who will be selecting them or if it's going to be some sort of you know voting process. Nobody really knows that at this point, but it will most likely act to elevate the voices, says VenezuelanAnalysis.com, of the grassroots community governments known as the community councils and communes in the Venezuelan legislature. That's speculative, um, but you know even so, it sounds like they're putting communists into th this particular group. According to Cabello, it will act as a legislative platform for the, quote, people to arrange resources, leadership, decision-making, laws, and its way of life. As long as I am president of the National Assembly, which will be until the next 5th or 6th of January, you may meet as much and however you like to discuss the proposals that you have. Sooner rather than later, power must truly rest where it must reside. With the people, said the chief legislator. Do you believe him? No. You don't think that he actually believes that power resides with uh, with the people? No. You're told I, I, I would uh, go out on a limb and say that Kim Jong-un would probably say something similar. Yeah. Because after all, <laughs> North Korea, 
aside from being the best Korea, according is, to some, is the Democratic People's Republic, People's Republic of Korea. Article number the 50. The people. Yeah. Article. And Republic. <laughs> Ask the people in the prison camps if they feel like it's they're It's a part republic, of not a democracy. Article number 58 of the Law of Communes provides the legislative basis for different branches of government to create internal, quote, additional communal systems, unquote, with the purpose of advancing, quote, self-government, unquote, with from within the Venezuelan state. Now, I got to admit, you know, this is a system with which I'm not familiar at all. So, you know, I don't know exactly what this, you know, these law of the communes are in Venezuela, the additional communal systems. This is all, you know, very unfamiliar territory for me. So if you know more, we'd love to hear from you. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Cabello framed the creation of the National Communal Parliament as a preemptive blow to the opposition coalition of the Round Table of Democratic Unity, which is the opposition to the Socialist Party, which will take a two-thirds majority in the National Assembly on January 5th. Now, this article is older than the one we talked about earlier, and for those of you just tuning in, the other news was that the uh, this opposition party is now no longer going to have a two-thirds majority because of a judicial coup, which was organized by President Nicolas Maduro. The 112 incoming right-wing legislators affiliated to the bloc were elected to the chief legislative body and are expected to attempt to roll back significant laws implemented by Maduro and his Bolivarian revolution. Caballo said, quote, Now we have a parliament at the service of the bourgeoisie. We will hear nothing about attending... To the needs of the people. So once again, the socialists posi positioning themselves as though they are the, the voice of the people. That the people want nationalization of s uh, grocery stores, which have resulted in empty store shelves and uh, hungry people That's fighting over food. That's just because we didn't nationalize it hard enough. Well, you know, I guess they could make that argument because there are, apparently are some stores that still have some n independent control there. Uh, but yeah. Toll free number tonight, 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. Let's go to Dave. He's in New Hampshire. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Daryl. Dave in New I Hampshire. I wanted to update you on – can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. I wanted to update you on a case uh, that is uh, not getting much attention. Well, I mean, lately it hasn't gotten much attention in the press, but it's pretty big. Uh, the, the fight between New, uh, New Hampshire right to life and uh, Planned Parenthood. Uh, and Planned Parenthood's apparent collaborators in the government. Tell me about it. I don't know anything Very about this. Hang on, Dave. We're going to have you explain here in moments our toll-free number, whether you want to talk about Planned Parenthood or the commies in Venezuela, whatever happens to be on your mind, 855-450-3733, 855-450-FREE. Also, you can Skype into the show. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Coming up, mandatory blood draws, forced blood draw DUI checkpoints. Are they coming to a city near you? We'll find out. All right, listen up, because this is the most important thing you're going to hear all day. What if I said you could make money flipping houses without any cash, credit, or manual labor? And what if I said you could do it part-time from the comfort of your home? Sound un believable Hi, I'm Preston Neely, and I'm going to prove it by sending you a free copy of my smash hit selling book, How to Get Rich in Real Estate. It sells online for $19.95, but I'm giving away 5,000 free copies this week. To get one before they're gone, call 1-800-961-8439. I used to be so broke, I had my electricity shut off nine times. But I figured out a simple way to make money flipping houses without even breaking a sweat. Now I'm living the good life, and so should you. Listen, if you're sick and tired of stressing about money, this book could change your life. Hands down, it's the fastest, easiest way to get started in real estate. Let me prove it. Call right now to find out how to get your free book. When they're gone, they're gone. Call 1-800-961-8439. 8439 did you know that home break-ins increase more than 100% during the holidays? It takes just 10 seconds for an intruder to kick in your door. But police response to a home alarm system is more than 20 minutes. And intruders are in and out of your home in 5 minutes. Thieves know that you're not home and have presents inside just waiting to be taken. And if you are home, how safe will you feel with an intruder lurking inside with your family? That's why police across the country are recommending you use door armor. 
proven to withstand the force of a battering ram. Door Armor keeps intruders out. It's easy to install and barely visible, and your door armor is guaranteed for life. Go to InvasionStopper.com for a very special buy one, get one at half off deal. These savings are for a limited time and only available to GCN listeners. Protect your valuables and loved ones this holiday season. Go to InvasionStopper.com now. That's InvasionStopper.com. Are you getting squeezed by the economic downturn? Hey, you were doing fine. Then, all of a sudden, you're having a tough time paying your family's credit card bills. Maybe you were downsized or even lost a job, but you still owe ten grand or more in credit card bills. And you just can't afford the minimum payments anymore. We're here to help. We are the Genesis Debt Partners. We know the secrets to negotiate better terms with your creditors. Make a free 10-minute call right now and and learn how we can help you get out of debt. 800-981-7590. If you owe 10 grand or more in credit card debt and you want to learn how you can pay less and get out of debt faster, call right now. 800-981-7590. 800-981-7590. Get out of debt now. 800-981-7590. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink. Providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls about what you want. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. With you in the studio tonight, you've got Ian. And Daryl. 855-450-3733. Don't forget to join us online at freetalklive.com. Lots of great features are free on the site, so please go and enjoy at freetalklive.com. Right back into your calls and thoughts. Dave is on the line in New Hampshire. He's Dave Ridley from RidleyReport.com. You were saying there's some sort of controversy, Dave, in uh, New Hampshire between Planned Parenthood and... And who who was the other group? Some Christian uh, group? Uh, New Hampshire Right to Life. Okay. So what's going on? Anyway, today, our, just, just this week, there was an, uh, a news release from uh, New Hampshire Right to Life. I guess it's nhtrl.org. It says they have uh, won a, a, a right to know victory in court. Apparently, what they did was they sued the, the Department of Health and Human Services in New Hampshire uh, and claimed that the... Uh, they were collaborating with Planned Parenthood to hide uh, documents from the public or, reda or redact them. And according to the news release, the judge said that the, uh, the, the, there was, they should not have been releasing redacted documents and Planned Parenthood and shouldn't have been collaborating with the Department of Human, uh, DHHS, Department of Health and Human Services in New Hampshire, uh, to hide information from the public. Um, and that's you know that's what's happened this week. But there's this there's this much larger background that as I was looking into this that I had not realized was going on. As you may recall, back in 2011, uh, the state defunded Planned Parenthood. This okay. was sort of when uh, this was when the uh, sort of Tea Party slash Free Stater legislature legislator was in uh, legislature was in power uh, for a couple of years, and um this this triggered apparently a much bigger fight than we knew at the time uh the, the uh 
failure, so the fact that the state was not funding Planned Parenthood triggered the Planned Parenthood to go to the feds to try and get the money directly from the feds Mm because the feds had been sending it to them through the state. Uh, And they went to a bureaucracy to do this. I guess it's like the Bureau of Family Planning or something like that. I didn't even know there was such a thing (laughs) at the federal level. But um, they tried to get the money directly that way. The the Bureau uh, tried to go through the normal bureaucratic process of giving them funding. And then the White House apparently intervened, according to the union leader. Uh, in an article a few months ago, the White House got involved. No, 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 you can't wait. You've got to get money directly, immediately, to those Planned Parenthood people in New Hampshire. Um, wait, who did they say that to? Blocked. They said that to the Federal Bureau, or they said that to the state? The the feds said that to the they, – they, I think they did an in-run around their own bureau. They wasn't, it wasn't trying to go through the state. Uh, they, okay. they went through – they went over the head of the uh, of who, the uh, bureaucrat who was in charge of that federal bureau, and he was right. trying to kind of do it by the book. Uh, so it's this whole brouhaha that I guess apparently unfolded without hardly anyone knowing, and the union leader apparently must have done some investigative reporting recently and were kind of recounting all the different steps that went. Because I guess a lot, there's a, a lawsuit going on at the federal level, too. I think it's gone to the Supreme Court with uh, New Hampshire Right to Life trying to uh, – uh, question whether or not it was appropriate to do an end run around the set, uh, around the state's uh, defunding process. Well, I mean, obviously anybody can apply to the federal government for whatever kind of perks or bennies that uh, that they want to. But what's the issue that's on the table right now? I mean, so are they still defunded in New Hampshire? Who's conflicting with them now, if if that's the case? What's happened lately is that the executive council, I guess, voted again to change the funding, I did the, probably to decrease it rather than to eliminate it entirely. I think they're cutting them off from state funding, but they're not trying to cut them off from federal funding this time. Does that make sense? I don't see how they could cut them off from federal funding at the state level. They can't, they but state now, legislatures course, try to the- cut things off from federal funding all the time, especially if it's something that the ruling group of legislature people don't agree with. Now, I'm more curious about how and or why Planned Parenthood was involved in being able to redact a response to a 91A request. The 91A being the right yeah, to that's a great question. information. That's why it makes it our bit. That's why it makes it our business. I mean, it's so interesting how close they apparently are to the authorities. Like, I mean, so you and me, we wouldn't necessarily be against Planned Parenthood just because they favor abortion rights or something like that. But once they start making us pay for it, then it starts to become our business what they're doing. And, and the other, the other thing is, that I guess, in the union leader. Leader article uh, when they called the they said when they called the Planned Parenthood people for comment uh, on on the federal case the Planned Parenthood people referred them to the U S attorney for com for comment weird <laughs> that's that's how close they can you imagine someone calling you for a comment and you refer them to a government official for comment about about your own activities yeah I mean that that's certainly an uncomfortable close? level of connection I support Planned Parenthood as an organization generally they provide a lot of good sexually transmitted disease testings and things like that for folks I think they do some good work um, but I don't support government f- uh, you know forcing people to pay for Planned Parenthood nor do I support government forcing people to pay for abstinence education I think the government if we're going to have one needs to stay the hell out of people's bodily decisions like this and allow people who support Planned Planned Parenthood to support them directly and allow people who support abstinence education to support them directly and stay the hell out of it. Dave, thanks for the call tonight. Appreciate the uh, the info. That's Dave from RidleyReport.com. It's a great uh, channel on YouTube that kind of keeps you in the loop with some of the stuff happening here in New Hampshire. Our toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. Any other thoughts on uh, Planned Parenthood, Daryl? No, uh, other than I'm curious how and or why they were involved in a 91a response 91a again is the uh the, the code here in new hampshire for freedom of information right Act. for for you and uh yeah that's a little strange i think the best way to solve this problem though is to abolish the department of health and human services i mean that would be uh, i think a step in the in the right direction and while we're at it let's abolish the department of safety too which is basically the state police yes. there's i think a lot of uh, state governments that could pretty easily be just shut down you know, people would say, well, what about the uh, the crazy hospital? There's a state hospital that 
is basically a crazy ward, what would happen with that? Let's let the market decide. There are people who are compassionate who want to help those people. Let them figure it out. Give them the hospital grounds. Give them all the buildings and whatever it is that, you know, give it to the staff. Let them own it, basically, and let them run it. Let them run it and see how they can make it work. See if they can get donations from folks who want to uh, to assist with that. Now, as you know, I review legislation for the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance. For, for the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance, and I was going through the list of bills, and I saw one that got me all excited when I read the title of it, relative to repealing the statutes authorizing the Department of Education. And so okay. then I open it up. I'm like, all right, this this is going to be great. It creates a commissioner of education instead of a department of education. And so, is, in essence, it instead of having – no, it no. then puts basically an education czar. Oh, so it creates another layer of bureaucracy. So right. It, be- removed, it, it changes Department of Education to Commissioner of Education, Ugh. and then it's one guy That's even worse. instead of a group of guys. Yeah, so it would create an education czar. Absolutely horrible. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Well, we do a lot of work to do here, Daryl. It is the Free State Project. Some people are like, you're not a free state. Well, duh, it's a project. We're trying to work on this. My my point was, when you repeal something, just make sure you get rid of it altogether, not give a czar. Not replace it with something else. 855-450-FREE. That's our toll-free number. Forced blood draw checkpoints. Are they coming to a city near you? We'll find out. So you've got to take a state construction license exam or certification. Can't decide on what books or what chapters to study? Discover right now how you can eliminate unnecessary books and wasted study time. At ContractorExam.com, our study materials zero in on state-required test topics in an effective, multiple-choice format. So whether you're a plumber, electrician, general contractor, or other construction-related trade, ContractorExam.com will help get you prepared. Visit us at www.ContractorExam.com today. Hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists. Get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of Slingbow. A new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at slingbow.com. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. This is your Robertson Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading on Thursday, gold is $1 lower at $1,063 per ounce. Silver is even at $13.93 per ounce. Bitcoin is trading at $423 U.S. dollars. Our offices are closed this week for year-end processes and to enjoy the holidays with family and friends. But you can still shop our online store at rrbi.co for some of the best deals you'll find on silver and gold. rrbi.co LRN.fm is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate us five stars, then share the link on your social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free, at apps.lrn.fm. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of... 
where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. When you amp Free Talk Live, you get perks like access to the amp-only Facebook group and amp podcast. Visit amp.freetalklive.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Join us here. Toll-free number for you, 855-450-FREE. With you in the studio tonight, you've got Ian and Daryl. 855-450-3733. Also, Skype into the show. Skype username is lrn.fm. You can save 20% easily on pretty much anything you want to buy through Amazon by going to saveatpurse.com, saveatpurse.com. The trick is you've got to have Bitcoin to get huge discounts and 20% is the low end. You can get 30, 35, 40%. I've gotten as high as 45% off of something. I got a Blu-ray disc from uh, Amazon and 45% off, which is pretty sweet. Uh, so you get to select your discount. The longer uh, or the, the the higher the discount, the longer it may take to fulfill your order. Uh, but again, the catch is you got to have Bitcoin. For the 20% off orders, you'll see those things uh, fulfilled within like an hour. In my experience, they don't guarantee it in an hour, but that's what my experience has been. I put something up for 35% off the other day, and that took about a day or so to get fulfilled. I've so. had things at 35% get fulfilled in just over an hour. Yeah, it just depends. Uh, so you're basically putting your Bitcoin into a, a marketplace that people can bid on it. Uh, go to saveatpurse.com, saveatpurse.com, and get started there. Let's go to the phones here, and then we'll talk about forced blood draw checkpoints. Uh, first, though, Nathan is on the line in Texas via Skype. Hello, Nathan. Uh, hi, guys. How are you? What's on your mind, Nathan? Um, well, there was a video posted to YouTube a few days ago by uh, Mark Baker from Baker's Green Acres, and it was announcing the closure of his farm and the sale of the 80 acre property now this and, guy um, uh for listeners who may be unfamiliar who is mark baker in baker's green acres didn't he have like a run-in with the government of that state was it michigan you said right he yes in, in michigan it was uh with the michigan department of natural resources they initiated a legal battle where they used the uh invasive species act apparently to uh um basically you know try to confiscate stuff from his farm and give him a, a legally a hard time. They raided him several times. And the issue was that he had pigs that were descended from Russian boars, which apparently to the Michigan Department of Natural Resources makes them feral, even if you domesticated them and, you know, they're being cared for by humans and they're not a danger and so, so forth. So they were saying he couldn't have those pigs, uh, and so they went after him on some other premise? Uh, yeah, and then they, um, the the Farm to Consumer Legal Defense Fund was uh, was supporting him for a while, and um, it, it seemed like it was a nebulous thing, like they were just trying to harass him because uh, I guess he was some kind of maybe threat to their authority for standing up to them. I mm. mean, because it's it's not like it's not like you know, I mean, this is kind of a farm in the middle of nowhere, so to speak, and he had a he was selling to a niche group of people who wanted you know, exotic reed pork. So I guess so what that you're was saying is it's not like it. he was uh, competing in any meaningful way with like the big farm manufacturer types out there, the, the big pig well, farmers. It says he had some retail locations and that was mentioned in the video. So mm -hmm. I don't know the size, I mean, an 80 acre farm. I mean, I guess maybe someone else could tell you like how like monetary wise, like how, how profitable that would be. Um, I just felt that I wanted to call in and mention this because he did announce the closure and selling oh, of his farm. Um, he mentioned sad. his family three times in the video. It's on YouTube. If you search um, Baker's Green Acres, it'll come up. And why is he and, closing? Did he Was he not successful ultimately with whatever uh, case against the regulators? Well, that I, according to this article I have, that case was concluded. Um, I thought he was. Here, I thought he was uh, vindicated in that, but I don't. You know, there's so many farmer he attack may stories. Have been vindicated. 
I, I don't have the exact case in front of me. Maybe they um, just kept coming, you know, maybe even though he won the well, case. In, yeah. Yeah. In the, so this is a separate matter, actually. So they raided a retail location in Marquette, Michigan. Ugh. Um, and they said that he didn't have, because apparently there was a picture of prosciutto, which is a kind of meat. Mm -hmm. And it was said that, oh, well, you know, he doesn't have the permit or the permission or license to sell this kind of prosciutto. So they were essentially, uh, in the video, he referenced friends that were selling uh, or for him. So it sounds like they're targeting um, in, in raids people that are selling his pork. So in this right. case, so they instead raided of, So they failed restaurant. going after his farm. And, you know, like the Farm Defense Fund or whatever came to, to his aid. So then they decided they were going to target his affiliates, basically, the people who were who are the end sellers of his product to put the clamp down on them, which would have ultimately cut off his uh, any kind of success that he might be having from a business standpoint. That is what he implied in the video, but uh, he also mentioned his family several times. So maybe he's afraid that, you know, more raids are going to happen. Maybe his family terrible. will be in danger. At any rate, I thought it was important to, because I feel like something like this shouldn't pass without comment that he's giving up. He's selling the farm. And he's going to move out as soon as he can. It seems like it's something that should be at least noted. So people. Yeah, know thanks it. for doing that. I think that was the place that Derek J went in. When no, they, no, is that no. Wisconsin? No, uh, the the he case went to the that Derek J one. went to it was the raw milk guy. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Vernon Hirschberger, and that who, was Wisconsin, right? That that was, I believe, Wisconsin. Yeah. So there's so many of these farmers that have been attacked by uh, various different government regulatory agencies. Thanks, Nathan, for the update on that. I appreciate it. I, I, that was one of the headlines I'd seen over the last couple of weeks, and it's just you know one of those myriad of things we hadn't gotten on the air. So this is the way you get what you want on the air. You can call up and actually bring it up. And I think it's an important discussion to have. Uh, these farmers have been attacked all around the United States in a variety of different places for, you know, making raw milk and selling raw milk or having unusual pigs or whatever the issue might be. Some state regulatory agency comes in, issues threats. Most of the time that works. Usually when the state comes in and issues threats, the person stops doing what they were doing and they give up on it because it's not worth the effort to bring lawyers in and whatever cost would be involved in that. Well, you don't want people getting salmonella, do you, Ian? Um, can you get salmonella if you actually cook the the food? That I don't know much about foodborne foodborne illness or whatever. If it's not cooked properly, then right. yes, you can get salmonella. But I, I was obviously being facetious yeah. because people still get sick from stuff that you buy at big giant chain stores from uh, farms and whatnot that get government subsidies for being farms yep. but the claim is you know these small farms they're doing stuff outside and they're not being inspected properly blah 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 but everything that the fda has ever recalled the fda at one point inspected approved it. Yeah. and inspected so yeah the government isn't going to keep you safe from getting sick that much is definitely true uh, and people should be free to take their own risks. And the raw milk thing is kind of interesting because you can look at different states. They actually, there's some map on the internet that shows you at a glance the legality of raw milk in different places. And some places it's completely legal to create and sell it. Other places it's legal to possess it but not to sell it. In other places it's legal to sell it but only sell it for pets. You can't sell it for human consumption. So you have to, like, you know. Right. Sell it under the auspices and of for pets. The, the way the guy in Wisconsin was doing, and I hope I'm remembering this correctly, is he was not selling the raw milk or the cheese made from the raw milk. People owned a portion of the farm, the animal. Yeah. And so he was then giving them their share of the milk from the animal. Right. So I'm not, no, I'm not selling you milk. You own. <laughs> Three percent of this cow, you right. will get three percent of the milk. milk. Uh, yeah, it was. It's you know been fascinating watching this stuff, and I always feel like I wish there was more that could be done for them. And it's always good to see that people do come out and support these folks. Yeah. Like at the the court uh, the court hearings that they've had, they'll actually have a variety of people, in, including our very own Derek J. Freeman from Flaming Freedom. Yeah, uh, he actually traveled up there to observe the court hearing in the Wisconsin case. And one thing that's interesting on that, the only charge that the jury wound up convicting this farmer on was tampering with evidence. 
even though <laughs> nothing would have been evidence had he not been charged with the other like four things. Yeah, bogusly charged and, and attacked. Yeah, but the defense was not allowed to make that point to the jury. They were not allowed to mention jury nullification. They weren't even mm. allowed to mention like what any of the penalties were. And there there were various other things that the jury or that the defense was prohibited from informing the jury of. That's how the jury wound up coming back with a conviction on just the tampering with evidence, not guilty on everything else. After the jury left, I think Derek and somebody else interviewed one of the jurors and they said, had we known he wouldn't have been charged with this, had we not convicted or, you know, of the others, we would have gone not guilty. Toll free number tonight, 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. Should have the freedom to buy from anyone you want and take whatever level of risk is necessary to do so. Currency is too important a thing to be left in the hands of government bureaucrats, especially when billions of dollars can be created with the swipe of a pen. Overstock.com supports the cryptocurrency movement because it returns the power of an inflation-proof money to the people where it belongs. Did you know that you can use Bitcoin to pay for anything Overstock.com sells while enjoying free shipping on orders of 0.211 Bitcoin or more? If you support freedom in the cryptocurrency movement, you should support Overstock.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. For over five years, you've been hearing about the Berkey guy, so you may know a few things about him. For example, you are well aware of the superior quality and effectiveness of Berkey water filters and accessories. But did you know the Berkeys have had independent lab tests done to prove just how effective they are? It's true, and he can email you the test results. Just visit GoBerkey.com. You may also know that the Berkey guy has helped tens of thousands of people get better prepared. Now here's something you may not know. GoBerkey.com has amazing specials and deals all the time on a wide variety of survival and preparedness products. Most ready to ship same day. Visit the Berkey guy at GoBerkey.com and be sure to click the red Products on Sale Now button. You can always call toll-free 877-886-3653. Again, that's 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com, home of the Berkey guy. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to saveitpurse.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. I know this sounds unbelievable, but at my house, we saved as much as 45% off of a new item on Amazon. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to saveitpurse.com right now, get signed up, and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 15 to 25% off of everything at Amazon through savepurse.com. It's saveatpurse.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS. 
free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Moments remain here. we got enough time for you. If you want to join us now, 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. From the freedom to buy what you want, from who you want, we don't have that in the United States. Not even close. Not even close to a free market here. People who are just simply raising and selling farm things like pigs and milk and you know, they are being regulated out of business. We just found out from Nathan in Texas that Baker's Green Acres, which is a farm that was in the news previously in Michigan uh, for selling people pig-based products without government permission slips, is now shutting down. Because so. they were Russian pigs. Yet those were communist pigs. You can't be eating communist pigs. I mean, that would kill kill you, ultimately. Uh, so anyway, whether you want to talk about that or whatever's on your mind here, 855-450-FREE is the number. The story from copblock.org's Asa J. As major U.S. cities implement a police state amid New Year's Eve terror fears, police in some states around the country are gearing up and already implementing no-refusal DUI checkpoints. In New York City, more than 6,000 cops armed with rifles, radiation detectors, and bomb-sniffing dogs are descending upon Times Square as more than a million revelers watch this year's ball drop. An additional 1,200 probationary cops and plainclothes police will be infiltrating the crowds while working undercover. 14 checkpoints surround the square where citizens must submit to body inspections and secondary screening before being allowed to watch the festivities from one of 65 massive spectator pens surrounded by officers. Elsewhere around the country, individuals are experiencing apprehension on the road uh, that is uh, because they may find themselves in an encounter with a so-called no-refusal checkpoint. Legal experts say the name is facetious. Anyone can refuse a breathalyzer or chemical analysis test being demanded by officers at a checkpoint. What differentiates no-refusal checkpoints from others, however, is the ramped-up process in which those that legally refuse are taken before a judge. During this process, a search warrant for a blood or urine sample will be submitted by officers to the judge, who will determine if there's a reason to suspect a driver is drunk. If a warrant is obtained and the driver still refuses to comply with requests for a chemical analysis, he or she may be physically restrained in order to have their blood forcibly removed from their body. In Tennessee, the State Highway Patrol will be enforcing a no-refusal traffic safety policy from New Year's Eve to January 4th. Forced blood draws began in the state during 2009, but only in cases of vehicular assault. In all other circumstances, the extractions were not compulsory and could be declined. However, that changed in January of 2012, when a new law took away the choice of DUI suspects to refuse blood draws in favor of having their license suspended. Since then, warrants have been rubber-stamped by judges to forcibly extract blood from any driver they decide may have been drinking. Okay, so did, did I hear you correctly that people can refuse, but they'll have their license suspended? Uh, that's the way it was in Tennessee until 2012, and now you don't have the choice to refuse. The judge could issue a warrant, which will force you to give blood to the right, state. Right, but basically coercing someone into accepting the blood draw— that's not really giving them a choice. Well, right. the choice is we're either going to draw your blood or you can't drive for the next six months without risk of going to jail. No doubt. There's coercion that's not involved. A, that's not a choice. Well, it's if the, a, if the option. It's a crappy choice. No, <laughs> if the option were I will shoot you or you will have sex with me, that does not make it consensual sex. That is still rape. No, I agree. I, I don't think they're saying that it was consensual but it's now even less of a choice than it was before, which wasn't much of a choice. In Austin, Texas, police have been enforcing a no-refusal DWI enforcement initiative that started on de uh, December 18th of this year and lasts through January 3rd. As of Monday, 127 people had been taken into custody, with 48 choosing to take a breathalyzer and 14 consenting to the blood draw. As many as 65 people did refuse consent and then had their blood forcibly taken via this warrant process. And do they still wind up losing their license for six months? 
uh, pr- probably if they get alcohol in their, you know, if they get convicted of a DUI. Right, but no, they, they refused, and then the oh. judge gave the warrant. Do they still wind up know. losing their license? Maybe. It's not clear based on the story here at copblock.org. Texas police have been at the forefront of implementing no-refusal programs, usually on behest of the federal government and their National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. In Austin, the cops want to make the no-refusal policy a full-time policy. So right now it's limited to occasional weeks where they decide to crack down. And, of course, that's inevitably going to come. I mean, if they're getting away with it now, a couple weeks a year, they're going to get away with it 52 weeks a year. If they're anything like what we've seen in the past, the mandatory blood draws involve strapping terrified and screaming suspects onto tables where they're held down, tied down, and jabbed with needles. To see the practice in action, they do actually have a special report they link to here. We'll give you the full link on our Facebook and Twitter, and there's a video of the investigation. In Louisiana, state police conducted these no-refusal checkpoints this week but ended them yesterday. The practice draws controversy every time in headlines, but since the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in 2013 that officers must try to get search warrants before ordering blood draws, thus not making them mandatory, the practice has been considered to be constitutional. ACLU Mississippi staff attorney Andres Wallace said, quote, As much as it pains me to say this, if conducted pursuant to a valid warrant, the drawing of an individual's blood at a no-refusal checkpoint would be constitutional. You think that's true? I don't know. There's so much bastardization of what the Constitution authorizes that... All right, we've got a judge on speed dial, and he's rubber stamping everything we want. What's that? You said so, it smells like alcohol? All right, here you go. Here's your warrant. Right? So it's going to uphold in court. I, I don't think it makes it right. It might be constitutional, but it's not right. That's a great point, and I think that more people need to understand the difference between what's written down in law, and of course the Constitution is supposed to be the highest law of the land, doesn't necessarily mean that it's right. And, of course, there's plenty of times where you can point this out. Uh, treating black people as three-fifths of a man, or three black men specifically as three-fifths of a man, that's obviously not right. And, you know, the ban on alcohol, clearly not right, and yet it was part of the Constitution. So yes. just because something's in the Constitution doesn't make it holy. Now, the story here over at Coplock says... It makes no difference what men in robes say about the validity of how enforcers of the political class may victimize the populace. The practice of forced blood draw, no refusal checkpoints, is inhumane, unconscionable, and a violation of our most fundamental liberty, self-ownership. It is rape by the strictest sense of the definition, an intrusion upon the physical sovereignty of one's own body. Although no refusal campaigns are constitutional, said Wallace, At the Mississippi ACLU, I'm still very concerned about an individual's inability to refuse. Why am I being forced to submit to a blood test? There seems to be other means of achieving the goal of deterring drivers from driving while intoxicated. Drawing blood seems like an extraordinary measure where other less intrusive methods are available. And I think one of the methods of reducing driving while intoxicated would be to allow freedom of competition in the area of driving people places in transportation. Yeah. Last night in New Hampshire, Arcade City got its launch, which is the new project by Christopher David, the uh, super activist out on the seacoast that is uh, was last night, gave dozens of free rides to people in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, who needed a ride from point A to point B, probably many of whom were inebriated. And he gave those people free rides despite being he and like a 10 other people. So there were several cars on the road that were giving these free rides away. Uh, despite being threatened by the Portsmouth police with potential fines of $500 to $1,000 if they were to accept even $1 in tip on the free rides that they were giving. Do you know if anybody took up the advice of you give the passenger a bottle of water and you accept a tip for the bottle of water, but you're not accepting a tip for the ride? I don't know what level of interactions you know people had last night, but I do know that I have not heard anything about the police actually making any kind of ticketings yes. or arrests in that case. So it seems like, you know, for what they could have done, and they could have, if they wanted to make an arrest in this case or ticket someone, which is kind of like an arrest, if they wanted to do that, 
all they would have had to have done was sign up for a free ride and then offer a tip the, to the driver and then, you know, bust them. They could have done right. a sting operation, and it would have been relatively easy to pull that off. Um, but it sounds like they didn't do that. And instead, when they saw some lady on the side, a couple of ladies who were stranded on the side of the road who ultimately had to walk like two hours to get to where they needed to go or something— the uh, ladies asked the police if they could help them with a ride, and apparently the police laughed at them and then left them there. And that news is up right now at freekeen.com. Christopher David wrote up that piece, and apparently it was actually pu- published in the Union Leader originally, but now the story has mysteriously disappeared from the Union Leader's website. Maybe it's a fluke, maybe not, but if you want to read the original story in full, he copied all the text and put it over at freekeen.com. So apparently police were doing, they weren't arresting the Uber drivers or the uh, Arcade City drivers last night, but they were also not helping people get home who were drunk. 8.55, oh wait, we're done for tonight. We'll see you tomorrow. Online in the meantime, freetalklive.com. Check out Daryl's website, fpp.cc and fppradio.com. It's Free Talk Live. Are you- Money power and respect are all yours at credit success secrets revealed.com be seen as an industry leader you can do it the last application you filled out when it was time to hit submit did your nerves spike you didn't get the approval you seek but there's a better way we teach you exactly what to place into the right systems the right way the first time so you get approved get up to a hundred thousand dollars in instant business credit many people will get cash on the spot Use those two tools in your new corporate credit engine so you can walk into the bank and get your project funded today. It's all about today at CreditSuccessSecretsRevealed.com. Credit Success Secrets Revealed is explosive and ignites instant results. Dial 1-800-707-8719. That's 1-800-707-8719. 1-800-707-8719. Or just go to CreditSuccessSecretsRevealed.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Anarchics is coming up next, live after the news on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, January 1st, 2016. Silver is trading at $13.87 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,061 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $433. Antiwar.com reports as far back as early November, the international effort to get a peace process in Syria going hinged heavily on deciding who was a rebel and who was a terrorist. To this day, diplomats warn the process is stalled on the inability of nations to answer that question. The most recent UN draft on the situation continues to list defining terrorist organizations as something still to be negotiated, despite this seemingly being one of the primary focuses of several of the involved nations. Russia in particular has been keen for this to be resolved, both to know who the proper rebel groups are to start inviting to the talks, and to settle once and for all which rebel factions are terrorists who can be legitimately bombed. With other nations railing at every Russian airstrike, not explicitly aimed at territory of the Islamic State, this is an important distinction for them. But other nations are resisting this quick resolution, likely in part because it gives them a talking point against Russia, but also because 
every major nation involved in the process has a different idea of who is and is not legitimate. Saudi Arabia in particular is bankrolling several groups that are almost impossible not to be included on the final terror list. Early on in the process, everyone foresaw this as an issue and predicted a lot of horse trading on the final list. Ultimately, if this horse trading is going on behind the scenes, we haven't seen it, and rather everyone seems to be dragging their feet rather than risk losing important allies to the terror list. Indeed, this is going on so long that some diplomats envision simply moving on with the talks without resolving who's going to be allowed to participate, a move which itself could lead to a huge mess and a lot of infighting at the talks. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs offers premium publicity campaigns designed to facilitate an organization's adoption of Bitcoin as a payment system and to fully capitalize on that decision in their fundraising efforts. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. UPI reports Twitter reached an agreement with government accountability groups to revive a service that allows users to see politicians' deleted tweets. The service, called Pullet Whoops, is a product of the Sunlight Foundation and the Open State Foundation, two government transparency groups. It was effectively shut down in June when Twitter revoked access to their API. Twitter told Gawker in June that preserving deleted tweets violated Twitter's developer agreement. Twitter released a statement on Thursday announcing an agreement with the two groups that would allow the service to continue, saying, We look forward to continuing our work with these important organizations and using Twitter to bring more transparency to public dialogue. Pollet Whoops was launched in 2010 in more than 30 countries. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently remove the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports Europe ushered in the new year with heightened security fears on Friday as German police evacuated two train stations in Europe, citing a tip about a planned militant attack, and Belgium arrested three people over an alleged plot. Security forces in many capitals were on raised alert after a year of militant attacks, the biggest of which killed 130 people in Paris in November and was claimed by the Islamic State. Soldiers were on the streets of Paris and police forces in London, Madrid, Berlin, and Istanbul increase their presence as Europeans turned out to celebrate the arrival of 2016. In New York City, police tightened security for the traditional New Year's Eve dropping of the crystal ball in Times Square, where more than one million people were expected to attend. Celebrations in Germany took on a somber note when police warned of a possible terror attack and evacuated two train stations in Munich. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Our planet is but a giant petri dish swirling with pathogens, all mixed by the filthy stirring straw that is the world's fauna. Simply by sitting on her eggs and breathing, this duck unleashes a torrent of avian botulism, cholera, and duck plague into the air. These jousting elk slough off bits of skin and fur, sending millions of harmful bacteria into the air. Our closest relative, the chimpanzee, is itself the fountainhead of AIDS. Bitter at the ascendancy of man, these scheming apes brood this deadly virus in their jungle lairs. Nowhere on earth is safe from the threat of animals. Even in the bitter wasteland of the Antarctic, penguins walk for miles inland, ensuring their afflictions reach